so we're so we're good. We're good. <laughs> so we're good. We don't we don't need to talk about those things. We're not supposed no. to say any of that it's on, on the Don't say any. Uh, if we're on, don't, if, if, if don't we're say live, any don't, of that. Don't say any of those things. <laughs> Are you, you're just repeating me now. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Hi. Hey. No, I think I've probably just like hurt everyone's ears. I'm super excited to say hi to everyone. Where's my cat? Where's my camera even? Did, did you hit this one? I guess. Yeah, you hey. just pointed at it. <laughs> it doesn't look like that should be my camera. I feel I, like I should be talking to the TV. It's no. very disconcerting. Uh, hey everyone, welcome to the Wednesday Club. I'm Matt Key. Uh, joined as always are my other Wednesdays -y club members. They're to my left. They've moved the monitor and we are all thrown we are, off. Yeah, it should be there thrown. and it's there and we can't handle it. Welcome no, to the we're Wednesday be doing Club. That a lot. With we, special guest. Yeah, hi. Yes. Susie <laughs> DeYoung. That's me. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Talison and I. I've known Manzi for years. Yeah, um, a long time. Long time. Yeah. You we were way back. you were an avid cosplayer, but you've turned you've transformed yes, that love of cosplay into actually costuming heroes. I have, yes. Which is kind of amazing. Thanks. So, mostly, I want to hear all about that. Like, I know I'm 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 not in charge yeah. today, but I'm fascinated by this because it is way outside my area of expertise, uh, and because you actually sort of have your hands on the. Like the the practical answers to the questions we sit around asking all the time, which mm -hmm. is like, why is this? What are they going like to look this? like? What would it look like? <laughs> what would transition? What doesn't transition? My, like, my, my my favorite is I remember I remember walking around San Diego Comic Con, uh, and I actually I've never told you this, huh. and I, I was walking around San Diego Comic Con and I came across the full size Deadshot that they had up. Oh my god! Uh -huh. And I saw you. You I were standing cried. there, and you were literally doing the, yep. <sighs> yeah, like to no one. You were like, like a tourist. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I uh, actually I was standing there taking pictures in front of it and one of the DC guys at chief. the booth was like, "What are you doing? Like, why are you okay?" Cuz I was there for like a long time <laughs> trying to get like the perfect shot me of me being like, "Eh, this guy." And like, I was like, "Oh, I I made this. I worked on it." And he was like, "What?" And he gave me a t-shirt and Aww. stuff. It was really cute. You got cute. a t-shirt out of yeah, it? Yeah, it was really cool. adorable. It was like, I "Oh, so, so for for background, uh, uh, Manzi worked on the Deadshot costume, yeah, for Suicide yeah. Squad, mm -hmm. which is why she was staring at it lovingly. Right, she was right, like, yeah. No, that. I actually I almost cried because it was at Comic Con, like it's at in Comic -Con. a dis yeah, it was in a display case at Comic Con, and I was like, oh my god, my baby. Did you did you get to touch Will Smith? No, actually, the funny thing about that is all of the like. <laughs> All of the I love, like, yeah, that's a great segue to a follow-up. Funny thing. Fun I wish I had gotten a, a touch Will Smith. I didn't. But the funny thing about that is like all of the really big like A-list uh, people that we make costumes for, we never get to actually touch their body. We just get a perfect like life-size life cast of them. That's so we have like a perfect. Major? How very Westworld. It is, yeah, because there was like a moment where like Will Smith's like severed head was sitting on my desk for a while. It gets a little weird, and you have to like carry them around. You're like, oh, come here, Will Smith, let's go over to this room, like, because they're just big foam like weird. perfect body forms of them. What a good, yeah. what a good preview for your for your retirement <laughs> as a serial killer too. Which yeah, I'm really right. Excited about. So weird. It's super weird, especially when you know the actor, because like I worked on. Um, uh, Pacific Rim 2, which is out now. Oh, that's oh, right. I yeah. forgot that you worked on Pacific Rim. Yeah, so I was like fondling John Boyega's fucking thing for a while too, and just kind of, it's kind of awkward. His to head? Because you know, like, no, his, his, body. Oh, his body. Their heads are detached and then they like snap on. <laughs> it's very weird. <laughs> but you like, you're picking up this person who's like a real person in real life and you're like, oh, sorry. I don't know. It's just like, it's a little, it's a little weird. Because <laughs> dress uniforms are very common, but they don't usually like have the faces of people. Oh yeah, them. no, they like three D scan them, and it's an exact replica of the person, it's an exact size. So you can fit something to them, and then it will be guaranteed that it will fit the actor. How do you tell like if they'll be able to lift their arms and stuff? These are weird questions, but well, they no, do. No, they they do have to do actual fittings, but that's like the very like you know high up people in the shop get to actually go like touch the actors, whereas like <laughs> the rest of the hundred people that worked on the costume just touch the body parts. Since you have those models. Do you ever make like really terrible choices just to see how they would look? Because you, you know, you could never be like try on these seven terrible colors, but like you can. Because, <laughs> we you know, do. I mean, we have put like hats on them and stuff, but that's that's about as far as that goes. Like if someone's wearing like a I funny wanna... hat, or like you put your scarf on it, you're like, nice. Oh, know, are they, are they fully articulated molds? No, no, they're like <laughs> foam, like T pose type things. So, yeah. T pose. T pose yeah. is a th is a th is a thing in three D scanning. Right. Like yeah. Right. Anytime you begin or end an action, you have to go to T pose. It's like yep. this. Yep. 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 It's a thing. Yeah, they're in like a neutral <laughs> standing pose. Now I'm curious because you, as a person with costume experience, like, what do you find are the similarities, or you have to stay like that for the rest of the show? Uh -huh. so, you know, that's wait, 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 wait till we call quit. 
basically. Uh huh. <laughs> like, how do you apply the lessons of like what I assume? If people stand a certain way, there's a posture they're most comfortable with. They, if they walk a certain way, like those things must all play into whether a costume works or is good on them. Do you just do the mental math there because you're all crazy experts? Like when you have a model that you're putting stuff on. Uh, what do you mean? Like you like your. Your question is, how it, do you translate it from like a thing that's not a human to an actual? Yeah, when human you're doing body? when you're doing the work of fitting it on, even at the same body model, like if someone someone standing in T pose doesn't necessarily express like what they're likely to look like right. standing in it. Well, that's why you still need an actual fitting yeah. with the human too. Um, you can get like really close with the body form, but there might be some discrepancies that happen in the fitting. So there are fittings eventually. <laughs> I release I release the, you from your bo your bondage thank mat. You. <laughs> Uh, well, before we get uh, too much further into okay. the conversation, I, I wanted to, to say thank you to some of the fans that we got to meet at WonderCon. Oh. Yes! Oh, we had an amazing time at WonderCon. And oh, we, we met had a panel. so many. We had a panel? <laughs> I forgot about that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's been a, it's been a five days. It's been like a five four days. days ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's been a five a days. Uh, yeah, we, we had a great time. We had a, uh, met a lot of wonderful people. Uh, you spoke with a woman named Rochelle, I yeah. believe is her name, yeah, right? Yeah. Who made that incredible Doctor Strange cosplay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. She gave me my own sling ring. What? And it sits on my desk now. So was I she the one at our panel? See this. Or a different Doctor Strange? Uh, I think she was at our panel. She was at our panel. Yeah, well, she was at our panel. Uh, she was great. I actually, ha I think I have her picture on my phone still. Ah, uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, well, I forgot to. Get well, it. I mean, like that's that's good too, because like and like your your your. I find that your office, other than that one wall, is very dull and and anything yeah. you can do to actually yeah. actually we have a very boring we, 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 office. We, we, thanks, <laughs> thanks to thanks to thanks to uh, WonderCon, um, we found something for your office wall. We what? did. Because so, you are the most irritatingly easy person to shop for. Oh my God, that is amazing. Uh, so what now, is? What, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Who, who all do I hug for this? We were, yeah, we just, we were like, well, that's happening. I love you so much. <laughs> Can I, should I wait until after to hug them? Yeah, if for no other reason than other than we'll probably break our new lobs, probably. But we yeah. will. I'll hug you so hard. We'll get pictures do of you it. Like oh, it? this, I love it. It really, it, it screamed to you. Oh, this is so perfect. It was fun trying to sneak that into the office today, too. <laughs> oh, you totally did it. Oh the, oh, the ultimate journey with direct link to the astral. Oh, this is awesome. Oh, I love this. Thank you. Yay. I feel bad because I didn't get you guys anything. Yeah, you did. I'm wearing my approved by the oh, comics Oh, that's right. Code. I'm not wearing mine, but I did have it, and I wore it as a lapel pin for, like, a whole thing. Oh, Matt got so us prezzies after uh, our, our comics code thing because this image is now owned by and purchases of its uh, uh, support the Comic Book Legal Defense Fund in the greatest turnabout in mm -hmm. history. The greatest. <laughs> uh, sorry if we're, if we're talking all around you. We, we, didn't, no. we didn't mean to do what that. Whatevs. Uh, but I did. I, 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 got some, I got some fun books. Oh, yeah. I, I, got, uh, I got this book. It's an anthology called Monsters and Other, Other Scary Shit. Uh, uh, and it, it just looked fun. It's, it's by a bunch of different artists, and it had a bunch of like really just, I thought, interesting art. So I'm kind of excited to dig through that. But yeah. here's the thing I'm the most excited about. <laughs> My favorite Captain wow. Marvel costume. This is, most people don't actually realize this. They think Captain Marvel number one is the first appearance of Captain Marvel. It's not. Marvel superheroes Try number 12. Try out books. Uh, in the green, let's see in the, if people in the, uh, like it before they green light. Well, yep. in the in the green and white, which I also might add in this image, if it's even findable in there, of of the, the movie version of Carol Danvers wearing uh -huh. the green and white suit makes me. Oh, very, that's very, right. Yeah. yeah, they put that's it in the green right. and white because they. Good cause I actually didn't make that connection, but everyone was like, "Why is it green?" Because uh, old school. Because that, yeah. Oh. Do you want to hold? You may take out. I haven't even done that yet. I'll, I'll give you. I'll, I'll give you the virtual. Not, not that. Well, that one's the red and red that's, and gold one. That's yeah. what she's going to uh, uh, eventually inhabit. That's the one there we go. There we go. See. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Green. People were like, "Why is that green?" Because it's Cree, okay, man. Well, why because did they it's move Cree. The star exactly. down on her chest. Do you know? Is there like a good answer? Like, why is the what? The star has the been moved down on her chest in the design, sort of relative to the comic book versions of it, and it looks good, but it confuses me because it is now sort of the central height of the boobs rather than slightly above them. This is a hyper specific question. Uh, I guess I'm it does sort sure. of look similar to that one. It, it, it the entirely depends Jamie on the original Jamie McKelvey redesign. 
the, the McKelvey redesign also has just been through, I think, a lot of different artists who are just starting to figure out what, what fits with it. And yeah. I, it's probably, it's also probably so that the star can be seen more easily at different angles and like, so you get like a good. Oh. Order. Yeah, that Actually, could be it. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I don't, I don't know <laughs> if there's any, I mean, a lot of that is just usually stylistic rather mm -hmm. than any concrete reason. And like, like look, it looks cool like this. Looking at that image, it, while it looks, it looks like the bottom half of the star is at mid boob, but the top half of the star is uh, top boob, so I think maybe it's a it's a bigger symbol than it. Mm. Like, but you have to. It's kind of like when you look at the crescent moon and you're like, oh, there's there's more moon back there, but I just can't see it. I think that's kind of what that. There's is. more star back there. There's I, more star. I uh, interrupted mm. this. I I can't be the person to take this out. That is no, wrong. No, no, no. It's not wrong if I, the owner of it, allow you the privilege. Uh, those of you who caught the crisis episode the other oh, week. Man might recognize this cover that you picked up at WonderCon? Uh-huh. Oh my god, this is Justice League of America uh, For a song. number it wasn't 21. Even that much. Back after 12 years, the legendary superstars of the Justice Society of America, the incredibly long 12 years during which they assumed that all children reading comics had cycled and that therefore they were like <coughs> this existed before. Uh, featuring Crisis on Earth 1. This is the actual beginning of all of the crossovers. Next to Flash of Two Worlds, this is like where it takes the next step. Also why you don't hold seances, because immediately mm -hmm. you're going to have cross-continuity issues. <laughs> yep. If wait. Black Canary <laughs> shows up at your house every time you have a seance, have more seances. Have, have more seances. Or Dr. Fate. I would have Dr. Fate over to my house. Yes. Yeah, but Hawkman. No. Oh. oh. Molts. God, the worst. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. I, we, yeah. we will get on topic. We will. Uh, for, for some background to those of you who may not know, Talison and I go to Burning Man with this lovely lady as oh, well. Oh, yeah. So she's, mm -hmm. she's hyper, hyper close family to yeah. us. I occasionally wear the necklace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, this is amazing. I, I thought about wearing my necklace I too. almost brought wear one yeah. I knew I would get yelled at. It's a laugh. <laughs> mm -hmm. so. Guys, DC has their own version of for those of you who don't know. Really? It is page three, and I had forgotten this was in here. For those Those readers unfamiliar familiar. with the two Earths in which Barry, Flash, Alan, and Jay, Flash, Garrick operate, we point out that two objects like our planet Earth and its duplicate can inhabit the same space if they vibrate, as all matter does to an extent, at different speeds. Confusing children since 1960-something. <laughs> uh, 63. Oh, my God. Look oh, at yeah, those yeah. cat ears. Hmm. Oh, man. Okay, I'm gonna pass this to I need a Matt, wildcat. its rightful enjoyer. Oh. Uh, Aquaman looks a little like like taken by Hawkman. This Hawkman is a there. fantastic cover. It's, it's an so amazing. Good. It's so good. It's amazing. It's, uh, producer Liz also just notified me that my parents are in the chat. So hi, mom and dad. Oh my hey. god. Be, be nice I, to I'm them, chat. Sure oh wow, there's some definite color yeah. color issues. In, oh, it's so pretty. It, it, oh, anyway, it's I, I was very excited to uh, share that with you guys. It's I, so good. Uh, so you we have will... to read it. Oh, I, I will. I will. I plan on it. I, I'll probably, probably read, read the show. digital copy and just look at the ads in that one. I'm I'm yeah. I'm, I'm going to call us back back on the topic. Yeah, I, I do it. I know that you were you were a you were a cosplayer and started there. Like, what started the what started your nerding? I know you, you origin you, story. Origin the origin of your nerddom. Oh my god, I don't even know. Oh, Take us. That's such a hard board. question. That's, here, I'm going to do flashback. I love. Um, well, I opens up. Yeah. Comic books actually isn't my like area of expertise. Sure. Nerd dumb. It's probably yeah. like video games is my main I would, hobby. Yeah, I work on I, I work on a lot of comic book things because everything in entertainment is comic book things now. Mm. So and that's where specialty costumers are needed, like myself. Um, but yeah, I probably it probably started way back with like I don't know the first console I ever owned was PlayStation One. Is probably where it originated. That was a good system. Do you yeah. feel old now? I, do, I just I, I just aged a year hearing that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I actually, well, I, I had played consoles before mm. that, but my that parents That was the first were, one you owned. Yeah, my parents didn't what, buy What one. consoles did you play before? Uh, see, see if you continue to make us feel we old. We're not nerd like, testing. We're not. Super I'm Nintendo. I'm, I'm, I'm how old am I right now? That's what I'm doing. I'm sorry, <laughs> I already know her credits, so I'm just enjoying. Probably like Super Nintendo was the, God, was the so earliest. Super Nintendo. Ugh. This is oh, where God. the whole Mario thing, well, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. There, is a, there is a Mario There's thing a with me. I just yeah. realized I, I bought even more Mario art at WonderCon, and I went home and I was like, I, I have like 15 Mario I, art pieces. In I my saw house. you buying, and I was wondering. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is maybe well, getting. I, I could have like a Mario wall now. <laughs> so, what was the track from enjoying games to like expressing that fandom in terms of was it cosplay the next step or? Uh, no, I actually I 
I guess I started exploring that. Um, I started doing like illustration and concept art and stuff. And actually, when I was in college for that, I started cosplaying. And then I kind of realized that I liked making costumes more than I liked drawing. So I did the classic thing after I graduated and totally ditched my college like <laughs> training and completely changed my career. And and now I'm doing this. So. Oh, that's fantastic, though. <laughs> yeah. So you, you went to art school then? or Yes, some kind of I went place. to art school. But I haven't ever, I, I'm self-taught in fabricating and, and sewing and stuff, so. That I did not know. Yeah, yeah. that I did not know. That's terrifying. Really? Yeah. That's, wow. wow, you're very good. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Ma Nancy <laughs> made our Kigurumis, for yes, those of you who oh, yes. remember. She made our Kigurumis. Yeah. Uh, oh, she, went, so she made the coat that I wore at our my wedding. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. Oh. Mm-hmm. So... I love you. So You're the best. Aww, I love you too. Man. So I see the weird stuff you build. What would you say is your spot? Like, like, what, what, when, when they're when they're hiring people to build these suits, what do they, what do they hire you for? Do you have a specialty, or are you yeah, just specifics. always brought in for? Um, are you not like not really? I don't. The box? I don't really have a specialty. Um, I fall under. I mentioned earlier. I fall under an umbrella called specialty costumer, which denotes that I can sew and fabricate and uh, build stuff out of foam and like do whatever. Um, but it's specifically not fashion, so it's not like fashion design or anything. Specialty costume means you're making wacky fantasy stuff or sci-fi stuff or comic book stuff. Um, so it's really, it's, it's not, I'm not really special at called in for any one thing. It's just like, a lot of it is like who you know too. Like I've worked with this person, they call me sure, on this job and we are all kind of just well, bouncing around with each other. What is fabrication? And fabrication is, um, is basically just a broad term for being able to make stuff and craft stuff. <laughs> it's it's not specifically sewing. It's also you know like little handiwork stuff, sculpting, painting, weathering, all that kind of stuff. Which is often, I assume called for if you can't pop down to a thrift shop and get like a skull shoulder piece, right? right. Or a Will yeah. Smith head. Yeah, <laughs> a Will Smith. Head. Oh man, that was so. Like, talk like let let's let's look at uh, uh, mm. Suicide Squad. Yeah. Like, what was it that you did with Deadshot? Can you talk about that specifically? Uh, yeah. So Deadshot was was... He, for, was he the only one that you worked on, or yes, he okay. was the only one that I worked on. It was uh, actually the shop that I was working at, Legacy Effects. They do basically every big movie. Um, it's hard to say what movie they haven't done. They've done all the Avengers movies, Guardians of the Galaxy, like everything. Um, they were part of the reason that movie looks so kind of stylistically all over the place is because a bunch of, yeah, because a bunch of different shops did different costumes and they all uh, look different. Oh, yeah, so so um, so Legacy did Will Smith, Deadshot, and I feel like that looks like their style because they did the Iron Man suit and stuff. I feel like it looks like their style. It's just kind of like bold and like yeah. chunky shapes and stuff. And then the rest of the costumes in the, in the movie kind of don't fit with that stylistic totally thing. Yeah, you can tell and, that other people made different things. And I mean, this is no offense to anyone who made the other costumes, but Deadshot was my favorite one in that Oh, movie. thank you. <laughs> you might have a bias, but... <laughs> I do, I, I do, but for real, it was my, it was my oh, favorite. Oh, thank you. Costume. Would you mind, if you can, sort of lay out the, like, what is it that happens when they're like, we're going to make a Suicide Squad movie, and then on the other end, you're like, I've got a cast of Will Smith's body, and we're fitting clothes on it. Like, right. presumably, there is sort of some chief costume designer who's probably working with the director to lay out yes. roughly what's going to happen. Yes, that's what happens. A costume designer gets with the director, and that's like top level stuff. And we like, when, we, when I'm working in a costume shop, we almost, we kind of don't even interact with the costume designer. She's like, she or he is like top level executive. Then there's an assistant designer that we kind of interact with who comes to the shop and tells us if we're doing stuff right or not. But me as a shop employee, we are, I'm hired by the shop and just crewed up, the shop crews up the crew for, for the build. And then we are given reference pictures and being told, hey, make this happen. So. And you're going from the idea of what it might look like to the reality of making a thing. Yes, we are. We go from being given a design and then breaking down the design, and then several steps of making mock-ups and getting approvals on that, and then to the final thing. And then it's either money. Money is is no object, or money is quite a bit of object, and time is especially an object. And like there's right, of, right that weird yeah. fluctuation because because you do TV, you do a lot of TV costume design as well, and mm -hmm. I can't imagine that you are told, here's a million bucks. Here's 14 weeks, get at it. Like, I'm sure that's never anything that ever happens. Yeah, I mean, it, it does with stuff like Legacy, with like high end shops sure. like that, but there are definitely times where it's. There, there have been times where I've been let go because I've been like, we've run out of money. I'm sorry, we can't pay you anymore. Like, bye. And it's like, okay, <laughs> have fun 
finishing this movie. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> your, your notes are like, needs a little work on the left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're like, all right, have fun, guys. Hope this gets made. <laughs> like, yeah. So, so, like, something I remember losing losing you to the pit during this, something like uh, the Savitar costume from Flash. Oh, yeah. I know we have yeah. some pictures. Yeah, yeah, we, like, that's right. Yeah, like, Savitar from the that Flash. That thing was nuts. Thank yeah, you. That, that was crazy. a really, I really heavily worked on that. It was, um, we, I basically led that job for a while. So, so that was, so cool. that was, I'm really proud of him. Do we have? He's my glowing son. <laughs> so, so do you have? A, there was a special team that was in there, just putting lights in, in the. Yes, in there the... was a whole electrical team for Savitar, as well as a fabrication team. So I was on the fabrication team, obviously. And we put the suit together, and then we worked with a lighting team that put like probably thousands of LEDs in it. Uh -huh. It was nuts. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do we have? Do, I know I, I loaded some pictures of that somewhere. It would be under, like. Apparently, y'all went nuts with the pictures today. Uh, oh well, yeah. there's Deadshot. Dead oh. Yay, Will Yay. Smith. Looking very Deadshot. Yeah. So that's uh, that's my so boy. So did you work mostly on the helmet for that, or the full the full thing? I worked or? mostly on the cloth parts for yeah. for Deadshot. So mostly the shirt, the pants, mm -hmm. um, the straps. We added straps to all of the armor because a different a different part of the shop makes the hard parts, and I'm usually on the soft parts. So soft you're, goods. Is you're what soft called. goods. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. You have a soft heart. Oh, thanks. You're <laughs> soft hearts only and soft goods. <laughs> Soft heart, soft good. Yeah. Soft heart that makes terrifying flash villains. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, uh -huh. so, so, soft heart makes uh, terrifying flash villains. There, yeah. There should be a big, big blue glowing. It's also yeah, in big the main. Yeah. Big blue glowing guy uh, is what's called. Is. Yeah. I think the, the, so, one called Manzi Savitar. So what? Uh, uh, what did you work on with Savitar the most? Like, what was your primary? Um, I am just going to quote Chad here. Uh, Aki says, OMG, oh. she did Savitar. There we go. <laughs> there there we go. Yeah, there he is. Oh. That's Yay. your boy. That's your oh, little glowing. You're bouncing, you know, glowing. He looks that he was so good on camera. Like a big so yellow shirtless thing in the comic. I think this was quite a quite a good. Yeah, I, per, I, I like that Savitar quite a bit. So oh, thanks. There was a lot of glowing on that. It yes. kind of had, like, some moving pieces to it, if I remember, or, like, um, something. They or were was like, CGI? Or? They were, well, some, some scenes of Savitar were CGI where he's, yeah. like, coming up part and stuff but yeah. all the parts where he's just walking around is, is the suit um, but yeah I, I led I led the fabrication team on that so we um, I made the suits there were two suits and then there were like foam spacers yeah in between the suits to make to give the appearance of the armor floating and then the lights were on the other side of the armor to Ooh, that reflected back on the shiny suit so the shoot was like disco or the suit was like disco spandex you know like like literally like shiny glitter spandex underneath which is great because no, no one knows that savitar is secretly like fabulous inside <laughs> secretly that fabulous. was my favorite part oh my god <laughs> the it looks great club. on camera secretly he's fabulous. like sparkling yeah it. that's that's not i mean yeah. that did not i mean like that was just the, the light pick, picking that up and that did not read at all in the oh yeah i know yeah. thankfully you can't tell that he's super glittery but he's so glittery in there how how uh, Disco what? Savitar. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm so, please, at any point throughout this, I'm, I'm just desperately curious, because, like, what are the challenges or the things that the rest of us have no idea are involved in, like, making a giant thousand LED disco suit? I guess the biggest challenge is figuring out, like, how the fuck do we do this? Like, <laughs> we really, the funny thing about the Savitar build was this, my supervisor, the, the build took place over um, that year, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Mm -hmm. So my supervisor was on vacation for like most of the build, which is why I had to kind of take over because like nobody was there. So we were like, basically me and my team, it was a very small team, it was four other girls. We, um, we were just kind of like making it up as we went along and hoping that it came together and it did thankfully, but it, there was like basically no plan with that. We were like, we don't know how to do this. I guess we'll hope this works. So they had sort of like a sketch and yes, they, they had a like, design. Here, good luck. Yeah, he had already been designed, oh, and he'd already so been cool. in an episode. I think the CG version. The CG version had already, had already been in an episode. So, oh, so all right, yeah. so what match. is the, the? Oh, I see the disco. Is you that see the sparkle? Yeah, I see the disco. That's the sparkle. <laughs> There's sparkle spandex. Oh, that oh my god! So happy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that is so. So the lights fun. are reflecting on the disco spandex. Oh, that's which is so what fucking good. And they were just blue lights. Yeah. And it was like a silvery. Like it, it was, silvery disco or like a It was gray? like a teal blue disco spandex. Yeah. Oh my god. I kinda want yeah. disco spandex for burning man. I know. We yeah. Like no, it was totally burning man fabric. They got it from that one store downtown that everyone gets no. their shiny oh. fabric blue, from. Blue moon. Blue moon, yeah. Yes! I, was like, I love this place. Is it blue moon or half moon? It's blue moon. Blue moon, blue moon yeah. yeah. 
The Blue Moon is my favorite shop downtown to get <laughs> so Babbitt great. for it's Burning so Man. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. When, when I thing. saw that they got the sparkle <laughs> spandex from there, I was like, this is the job for me. Like, thank you. I have, I have a, <laughs> a velvet, like a crushed velvet robe that I have in, in Doctor Strange colors. Oh, have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that Julianne made me. Yeah. So that's going to be part of it, is sourcing whatever weird materials you might need yes. uh, for this stuff. Is that, like, is most of that work done here in L.A., even though that show shoots Yeah, so else? so with the exception of Savitar, we were able to just buy that all downtown as this regular fabric. Um, but most comic book, design, modern comic book designs have, like, crazy texture, which I'm sure you guys have noticed. Like, everything's textured, everything looks, like, raised, and, like, you could, like, you know, touch it, and it would feel cool. Um, that's all done by a specific fabric place called By Design, and they do every single movie. And they've like patented this way to like screen print textured stuff onto fabric. It's almost like puffy paint. It's like oh. raised, yeah. And oh, they special cool. print every single comic book. And I bet it's expensive. Oh yeah. Okay. It's like hundreds of dollars it. of yeah. Is that like none of us can afford that? Is that a modern answer to sort of instead of using like leather or literally spandex or some of the mm -hmm. other materials that people have tried in the past, where they're sort of like we're gonna invent a new thing that kind of like because the, the the big question, especially with our show, is like taking designs that only needed to stand up to somebody's ability to pencil ink and color them mm -hmm. and trying to translate them. Uh, it sounds like rather than like. I, I'm curious that there's this this special screen printed fabric that I guess doesn't resemble anything anyone wears, but works. Well, on it screen? is the base of it is usually spandex or neoprene, so okay. it is like normal fabric mm -hmm. as the base. But they this printing stuff they've patented it. It's like it's like a it's like their thing. They're the only ones that do it, as cool. far as I know. So so they are really like doing well in business, I guess. Because <laughs> there's um, no Market shortage of comic book movies, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. it's never going away. So. What does it? What is it that you get out of that? That you that is tough or impossible to replicate with other materials, like a certain look. Um, a certain feel? Yeah, yeah, a certain yeah. Just I guess like quality and um, just the texture. It's really. I wish I could like, show you guys. <laughs> the, 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 the thing. It's, it's like actually like raised. Like if you like if you touched the suits, you could feel the texture on them, and it really translates nicely on camera. And like with that, so which parts? Is there any of that in Deadshot? It, like is the cloth stuff that raised stuff, or? Or we could bring up Black Lightning. Oh, Black Lightning has a ton of that yeah. in the suit. Yes, actually, Black Lightning suit is amazing. You work um, on. I I in no yeah, way I read on your Twitter I all the time. The, um, <laughs> I read your Twitter the all the time. So I only worked on the undersuit, oh, not none of the armor. So another shop easily. did the armor. I, there, there's a but there's another shot eventually of him that we have that actually yeah, shows the undersuit. Yeah, his suit is like there we this go. whole. Yeah, yeah. You can see it's like it's like um, it's almost like glittery like circuit board uh -huh, fabric. Uh huh. And that was all done by By Design too. And that's wow. All, that's all raised. There's depth to it. You can actually like feel the ridges and stuff in it. Which, which means it. that you Chief, when, is there when any you put you can a zoom in on that when, when you the shoulder. When Sorry. you put a light on it, light catches it, which means that it, it gets formed yes, in three you can, dimensions. Yes, you can see the dimension, and, and that's what makes it like visually interesting. And everyone's jumped on that. Every single designer has been like, I there need this go. fabric. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. Oh. And that's printed onto the actual fabric. It's printed onto neoprene, yeah. So is that something that the costume designers like request? They say, we need to have this specific design. Then you have a graphic designer create that. They give it to yes. By Design. By Design prints it. Mm -hmm. or do you say to buy design, we need the, we need something that looks like this, and they have that in stock? No, they uh, they send a design. Someone Amazing. someone on the costume design team, which I'm actually not sure who, creates the uh, the, the print, and then by design prints the print. Amazing. Yeah. And, and I've seen ones like for the for the for the early 2000s Superman uh, costume. It was all mm -hmm. teeny tiny S's. Mm -hmm. The whole mm -hmm. thing. Oh yeah. Uh, or like, the 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 Brian Singer one, right? Yeah. 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 The, um, a really, the shield, a really yeah. cool detail from Titans, which is an upcoming mm. thing that I also mm. worked on. <laughs> yeah, a uh, really cool thing about Titans, about the Robin suit, the inside of his cape is yellow, and it's all tiny little little yellow R's. The entire, ah. yeah, it's like impossible to notice if you were like uh, right up against oh, oh, it. Look at it, oh, look at that's it. It's so a really cool. cool. Yeah, you can see little R's, there they are, <laughs> woo! Oh my god. Yeah, that's so. I loved that detail. Like, oh, that is, is really cool. Awesome. Well, and the that's nice like, thing is, as you can even see right there, the way it catches the light, so it actually yeah. gives you the, the curls that you would normally get yeah. in a comic book. That like, if you were as just like dressing up and moving around in a camera, it would just be a big piece of yellow cloth. Right. Exactly. 
that is. So, wow. Th this is fascinating. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Do, do you think that they use that same kind of thing? Like the, the Star Trek Discovery uniforms have tiny Star right. Trek symbols all over them. Mm -hmm. Like, is it something that once somebody saw that, everybody just got excited about a new set of tools because it sort of solves that thing? I, like, I think so. <laughs> I think that's what happened. At least that's, it seems that way because every, every design I see now is just covered with like, this is a different texture and this is a different texture. And, and it looks great on camera. And I think it has kind of become a design trend uh -huh. in a way. People are just trying to see what other crazy stuff they can do. Yeah. So, well, it's, and it's, it's working. I'm interested, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's, cool. it's 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 also it's a thing that with high def cameras, and I definitely know this is a thing that, because I cause I'm, have so many friends who film things, is that the minute you put high def cameras on any old props or old mm -hmm. costumes, your immediate thought is, oh no. Ooh. Right. <laughs> Ooh, exactly. Yeah. Is, is, oh no, I can see every flaw. And this way, there's something for that high def to like grab onto. Mm -hmm. Well, even like when you look back at like older movies that have had like a digital restoration and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you can see like some of the old makeup lines and stuff like that where like you maybe couldn't see it before. Or so. God forbid mm -hmm. if someone bought a TV and never turned off the, the, the scanning, smoothing. the smoothing, yeah. and you're like just everything looks like a high school play. How is How does The Hobbit look like a high school play? Stop it. Stop it. Oh, oh, no. So, I... I and there's so much I'm, I'm really excited about today because I don't know the answers to any of these I'm questions. So glad you're excited. Uh, <laughs> there's like, I, I I'm curious about sort of philosophically when you're taking these outfits and translating them into real life. Uh, there's sort of a question of like, should it be realistic materials or not, or what sort of have it both ways version like. I feel like we're living in a beautiful have it both ways age right now, mm -hmm. where like, you know, Captain America kind of looks like he could exist in real life, but obviously isn't wearing something that anyone in real life is wearing. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I'm fascinated about that because uh, you could sort of argue for both approaches for mm -hmm. like that people should wear things seen in reality versus like let try to faithfully interpret the sort of larger than life crazy elements of costumes. Mm -hmm. Where do you fall on that? Do you have a mm. preference? Do you have things that work better or worse? For I you? personally, and this doesn't go for anyone else in the industry, I personally love stuff being big and ridiculous mm. and not realistic. I love battle heels. I love all of that <laughs> stupid stuff. I love it. And but I know so it bothers some people. They're like, why would it? Why would someone fight in heels? You know. But I, I think it's just great because whatever, it's fantasy. Like it's not real. Um, Am I allowed to like hate battle heels but loves Doctor Strange's cape? Yes. Can I like pick and choose? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also not think... allowed. I'm completely not allowed. <laughs> I don't know if you've read the Constitution, Amy. No. <laughs> battle heels clearly stated in the yeah. <laughs> It's Your a right, right to wear battle it's heels right. is protected. My right to not like them <laughs> is also protected. That's nope. how freedom works, Matt. Nope, nope, afraid not, afraid not. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a good example of like live action battle heels that actually, other than the Deadpool trailer, which was a really nice pair of battle heels. Were there battle heels in the Deadpool trailer? Tra Deadpool is fighting in a strip club in one part of the trailer, and he's he fighting in heels. He oh lands in heels. I'm like, I was just like oh. I bet they were making fun of that exact. Trailer. Oh, they were. Oh, yeah, they were, they were delving right into it, and it was beautiful. That's so great. I'm uh, excited for that. I am too. I don't I know why it's good. It's so. And we'll call it X Force. Sounds a little derivative. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. It was. A, that was a pretty satisfying. Uh, there's some, oh, there's some. So, so those are actually some battle, those those battle, battle wedges. Those are, I was about to say those are battle wedges. <laughs> now I'm still love it. Big fan. I know Big my fan wedges. Big fan of battle wedges. I'm, I'm also going to say because I, I ran into a Thank cosplayer you, wearing those exact boots because because the Hot Topic then made their version of those that you could oh, buy. Yeah, that's right. That were the three part where you could take off. You could they were like all the way up boots and then you could like turn them to those boots and then turn them on the, and like it was all. Crazy buckly, crazy yeah. bullshit. See, those for me fall into an I accept them and will be happier when things like that don't exist. <laughs> like, I'm, I, I, it's a complicated line I walk <laughs> uh, where I thought that was a brilliant design and it looked gorgeous and it was a huge step in the right direction. I loved like a lot of what they did for, for that armor and that design. But this is not about that set because that set of questions is less about the limits of our imagination and more about whether choices have been made for other unrelated reasons that sure. I don't want dictating our present. Uh, but, uh, Makes sense. You know, uh, off of the soapbox and back into the topic. <laughs> um, my, 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 yeah, my, I was going to say my little home version of that was staring at Erica all WonderCon going, are you really going to wear those shoes all day? <laughs> oh my God. She going like, well, we'll see. <laughs> and then like by hour two, all oh, right, I'm taking these shoes no, no, I will say like by the end of the night, just carrying them going, I don't care. We're going to get ring, ringworm. It's happening. We're going to get ringworm. <laughs> like, 
Erica, I like the royal we. Yeah, <laughs> it was, I, we were a little. It was a, it was the end of Saturday night, so we were both oh, pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty yeah. done. Yeah. Well, she was gonna give you ringworm also. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah she's like, it's we're gonna figure out a way. I was gonna wake up and like, what are you? What? How did my? How did you do this? Her feet on you. This is what friends are for. We both get it. Oh God. So now that now that we've gotten that weird, so um, when you. Uh, like like with Deadshot or with Savitar, like they're like make this thing. Do you have comic book references in front of you as well as the designer sketches, or do you just have like we the costume have... designer has all of that stuff, draws up the sketches and gives you their yeah, sketches? Yeah, we have the final design. Like by the time we get a design, it's already been approved by everybody, so it's not even like an idea. It's like this is the thing. Yeah. So, um, but no, actually, they the weird thing about this industry, especially older people in the industry, is they like are just like, whatever, this is our job, I guess we're just making like a superhero costume. And I'm like Googling the character, like, what is this deal? Like, what, tell me all the things. And they're like, oh, I don't care. But like, <laughs> I totally care. You should just text us, we'll tell you. And now, yeah, right. all the time. Hey, Matt, give we'll, me some we'll, dead we'll, shot facts. <laughs> we'll, we'll, create, we'll create a little uh, help, help Manzi text chain. Yeah. And you can just ping at any time yeah. the Wednesday Club will be like, we know the answers. Uh -huh. So, so um, part of me also loves this because like things like I'm going to use Black Lightning for a reference uh, again because that's currently the superhero show I'm watching. Uh, is it good? I haven't started it. It is. I, I, I've only seen like, the first episode, but I really liked it. Yeah. It's yeah. really good. It's like it, somehow they managed to like kind of push everything I don't like about those kind of shows to a minimum and make it like fun and weird. It's great. I've only yeah, seen I agree. the first one as well, but it there, was intriguing as but hell. There's a, yeah. Yeah. There, but like that, there are... Q character style characters in those shows who are making the shit that they're giving to the superheroes. Mm. And you're getting to yeah. build like that is like there's there's a weird dissonance to that. To there's actually a team of people making superhero costumes that are then played by an actor right. playing the guy <laughs> making the superhero. Right, costume. right. I like that because we and actually that, have a joke about that. We joke about that in the shop where we're like, oh yeah, if there's just like a scene of like a character like on a sewing machine for two minutes and then they like have a full costume the next scene. Yeah. It's like, like, <laughs> like, so like, spend work like that. three months doing that. Yeah. Exactly. How, did, how did you sew, sew the armor platelets? Right. Your, your superpower is that you created that costume by yourself in a day. Like, right. well, like Spider Man's superpowers for years. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it has been. <laughs> Batman. Batman. There was that one time Spider Man didn't have his costume, so he had to borrow a costume from Johnny Storm and then wear a paper bag over his yep. head because he didn't have yep. a mask, and Johnny was just like, yep. I don't need a mask because everyone knows who I am and my face is on fire. So. Yeah. I guess a real fake thing that happened. That's a real fake that thing. <laughs> it's real enough. It, you know, it's, it's, it's real to us. You can Google it. It's, that's real enough. Um, God, I, Some like, people might make an argument that those characters are more real than we are. Key question. They probably Play will out. outlive us all. Yeah, well, they mm. certainly will. <laughs> oh, there's, there he is. There, there he is. <laughs> The all new uh, totally revamped Spider-Man. And look at it even like the, like it's the old Fantastic Four costume where it's the blue. Yeah. yeah. So oh my they god, don't you're use right. anymore, so it's his bullshit costume and yeah. it doesn't oh, that's fit. So yeah, it's and like it baggy. Fit. I love it. Oh. Chief, you're amazing. Oh my god, it canonically has little stirrups to keep it on his feet. I know, I do. That was the first thing I noticed. I was like, nice stirrups, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Bagman. So oh. what are yeah. you? Oh my God! Yeah. Look at that so practicality. <laughs> oh my Great. God, that's so funny. Because you don't want them like riding up in the middle yeah, of the Yeah, not when you're like, like yeah. No, it's just <laughs> the '60s. Men were still wearing sock garters and shit, so that that's important. Man, I miss sock garters. I own a great pair of sock garters. I'm not surprised. By I've never used them though, because it's hard to find socks without spandex. How many cravats do you think you own? Three. Yeah. All right. I, I'm, I'm he knows a low exactly on how many cravats you. <laughs> cravats I don't have. I don't have a good neck for cravats. Three. Yeah. That's like I got home the other day and opened the freezer and I still had some um, uh, Girl Scout cookie tagalongs in there because I'm 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 trying to not eat all of them all the time, and I know exactly. I'm like, wait, when I left today I had eight, but now there are seven. If, <laughs> if I could if I could program like a smart fridge to tell me exactly how many cookies are left in the freezer, that would I would actually be willing to share all the information of all the food I buy ever with the internet and like just let them just let everyone for know. that for that power. That's a fair trade. <laughs> It's fair. We have a lot of great uh, questions coming in oh, from chat. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Oh, yeah. I like, uh, Japan Rose asked, Manzi, what superhero costume would you most like to change and redo if given the opportunity? Oh, my God. Yeah. That's such a hard question. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. Uh, Fuck that. Fuck that what? costume. Wait, which one? Which one? The Suicide Squad one. Oh, yeah. That's the only movie she's been in, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. Fuck that one. 
You have it. What, what, what would you do if I you really had your... wanted it to be more close to the yeah. like original or what, the, the animated series one? one. Yeah. yeah or, like... uh, not Dini. Well, Dini. Dini. well, Dini wrote it, but uh, oh, why do Bruce I? Tim. Bruce Tim. Tim. I always want to yeah. say Tim Gunn, and I know that's not right. <laughs> Yeah, no, if it was... Who actually if, was a cameo in was a fashion-based Marvel comic. that mm -hmm. one, I'd be a lot happier. So what would you do if it were up to you to take a design that was, uh, like, that they came up with for animation, and it was your job to bring that into the real world? Like, how would you approach it? Like the animated Harley, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I would say that's pretty much just cosplay. <laughs> she is like, kind of cosplaying. Yeah. Like, um... I mean, I don't know how I would redesign Harley to be in a movie space, but I really don't like that direction. Ugh. Even though it's a beautiful costume. They executed it very well. They executed but it, was... it very well. It's gorgeous. The jacket is amazing and definitely like a feat in like like design. But it's just not my I really yeah, wanted I... the I really wanted the the jester thing yeah. in there a little more. Like I love that. My, would my... you make that out of old fashioned fabric or would you send off to to buy design and be like give it tiny card things? Oh mm -hmm. yeah definitely give it tiny <laughs> if I had if I had all of those thousands of dollars Hell yeah. <laughs> heart, heart, hearts and diamonds, spades and clubs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh. Woo! Oh. Writes itself. Really Shit cool. writes itself. Well, and then, like, it would also, like, and I know this is weird, but I, I these, this is the shit that goes through my head. It's getting the pom-poms to move just right, too, so that oh they would God. actually yeah. have, like, a good flow. Yeah. So you have like, to, it would be so it, cute. Would it, so, like, this part of the Harley cowl, yeah. what, is that, what would you have to stuff that with? Like, is that just know. cotton, or is there, like, a better stuff, like... This is a very practical, like, I'm like, going to go home and make this. I feel guy. like it would like, have to be, like, sculpted and cast out of something. Like, yeah. maybe, like, like foam or silicone or, or maybe, like, even foam latex to have, like, good movement and, yeah. like, really be flush with her face. It would probably have to be something like that. Actually, let's go all the way. I would just make it out of latex. The whole thing should whole be latex. Thing? Yeah. Yeah. The whole thing. Yep. The whole outfit. Yep. There, there we are. Oh, I love this costume. I really just think this is one of the best designs ever. It's so good. Is it my imagination yeah. that the mask actually has a wire on it there, too? That one seems to. I don't, you I don't remember noticing that yeah. before. I don't, I don't remember yeah. Maybe that was yeah. just that one shot. I was like, that's, that's odd, because well, we have a friend who's a very good Harley Quinn cosplayer and, was, and actually had... John like, Berman. John Berman, of course. <laughs> uh, uh, Tara, who had, who had the, the form-fitting mask made that was like... Yeah, well, okay, there yeah. we go. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, and then I the, love her. And then yeah. the and then the lipstick. Oh, it's such a good. The, I know the it's black. so good. Yeah. I don't like the. I feel like the Harley interpretation for Suicide Squad was probably right for the movie, but it wasn't right for me and my soul. And it was clearly inspired by some of the video game redesigns, yeah. which are a whole right. different set of things. Which I also don't like, but I'm same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They uh the so so what, uh, there's an interesting like I'm just fascinated by all these questions of taking it from one medium into another because like Harley's lipstick that we just saw, mm -hmm. it's it's got like black but with sort of red when it shines, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's sort of unclear like are those two different colors of lipstick or is this a, a lighting effect? Uh, mm -hmm. The way Veronica's hair is blue. Uh, and right. so I guess if you're doing this in the real world, you have to actually decide, like, what yeah. you paint their lips. That's what's cool about it, is you <laughs> have to make those choices, which is, like, like all those detail things. It's like, no one thinks about that until... That's the most fun part, Aww. for sure. So let me ask you this. Uh, this is going to be a very broad question, Marvel, DC, across the board. Which costume do you think is your favorite or that they've kind of, like, uh, captured the best? Like from from the comic book source, the, as far as you know. Oh, that's such a hard question. Is it Doctor Strange? No. Doctor Strange is a really fantastic costume. Don't it's yeah. up there. Don't, don't encourage him. It's up there. <laughs> but that is one of my favorite examples of like yeah. letting it be weird, letting it be yeah. out there. Well, and I think I think maybe it's dumb for me to feel like this, but I really like when it's close to the source material. Like, I really like I when it's, it's just an upgrade of what the costume actually is, rather than, oh, we are going to totally redesign this whole character. Yeah, like, I was really nervous when they were doing Captain America. I was like, man, I really don't, like, I want him to be well, star-spangled and yeah. everything. And then they were like, we're going to do it. And I was like, yeah, I love yes. that. Yes. And then they found a way in the Avengers, like, with Phil Coulson saying, like, I think that we need mm -hmm. a bit of that old-school American spirit for what we're going through. Like, mm -hmm. they justified like, when it was in the 1940s, it was like, eh, it's a little cheesy, but whatever, like, we'll buy it. But in the modern time, it's a little less palatable. Mm -hmm. And, like, having Coulson say, like, yeah, we think we could use I, some Star I, Spangles. I went, back and watched, yeah. I went back and watched it. I, f I found the costume a little, a little still uh, just a bit dissonant. And I'm glad that they, they only held on to it for one movie before pulling Wait, it Wait, which movie was this in? The Avengers, Avengers, oh, Captain okay. America. Right, right, Big right. blue. Yeah. 
the big. Oh, there he is. There we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, looking back on this now, it looks so it's, doofy. It's, it's a little doofy, <laughs> which is okay because he's a doofy character. Yeah. Man, oh my gosh, it's, he's been through so many right. like iterations. I couldn't even call that up in my brain. No, I know yeah. it's yeah. so deep in there. I really like what they did with like all the Asgardians, Thor and Loki, were yeah. like bright. Yeah. And, see, oh yeah, and then see, there, there we go. And there this is goes. Age of Ultron. Yeah, yeah. where they, it's like they figured I, it out here. You can see the plating where there's like a soft core so that the two shoulder pieces can move around. Oh yeah, I love that. Uh, and like, and you can see the plating in the in the abdomen where the like the the red gives it stretch. I yeah. love this stuff. Great airbrushing too. There mm -hmm. was great airbrushing on all the scenes, which what, is always what makes is, it like pop. Uh, how like airbrushing? Okay, like... tell us how to look okay. for that. What is Actually, that? Actually, oh. can you bring the picture back up? <laughs> yeah, yeah Chief, so, sorry to, we're gonna make you work. So tonight. Most, sorry. Most most costumes, <gasps> oh, when see. they are finished, they go to a painter. Almost every costume goes to a painter um, to get airbrushed, which makes, basically just makes it look more realistic. Like you can see uh, specifically on his abs. How there's gray airbrushed around the oh. white kind of oh. ab pieces, As like, like, like painting a mini. Like it's painting, like painting a, a mini. mini. They, um, an airbrush, a painter will go in with an airbrush and basically accentuate the seams and stuff. You can and it see makes it, on it the look star a lot there more too. like lived in. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because then it's not like, oh, I just like made this and you know, which I, which is actually a thing that cosplayers do a lot, where they look too clean. It looks too yes. new because they just made it. Where, whereas like there's one weird version of that right now, which is the Shazam movie, where they've leaked those pictures where he is super clean. Super crisp, and super yeah. crisp, although still some pattern, but it's kind of disappearing mm -hmm. into the into the bright red nightmare that is Shazam. I love Shazam, by the way, <laughs> Captain Marvel. I'm so excited that they're basically like his costume makes him look like a giant, like the toy that Arnold Schwarzenegger was was uh, mm -hmm. trying to get in Jingle all the way. Like, oh, like yeah, he looks oh. yeah, like look at that. Look at that. I mean, like, you can see you can see the way that the seams are kind of giving him some muscles. That is such a weird costume. It is, Aww, but it really? makes sense if you know what it is. Right, right. Which so, is, this is the superhero version of Big. It's basically an eight-year-old kid who's like, I wish I were oh, Superman. Okay. And then, so he yeah. turns into cartoon Superman. Right, right. With, like, plastic hair. But they right. clearly printed a texture on there. There yes. is, yeah. I'm you on can the see, You can see it, yeah. <laughs> it's really there. If we had a bigger picture, we could probably see what it is. So, so, these yeah. are all cell phone pictures right, at this yeah. point. Right, right, so, like, <laughs> They're just, like, set pictures, yeah. Of like some passerby going, holy shit! Like, it's oh God, my God! It's Captain Marvel. No, it's not. It's Shazam. Shazam. <laughs> oh, that's a whole episode. That is a whole. We actually should probably. Should we do a Shazam Captain Marvel episode? We're going yeah, to we have to should. do several disambiguation Captain Marvel episodes. Yes. Uh, uh, but no, like there, there are there are ain't broke don't fix some costumes. I feel that way about. I feel the same way about Superman that you feel about Harley Quinn. There's like, why argue like. Superman's costume was set and oh, fine, and there's know, no right. reason to fuck I feel with the it same ever. way about Superman's costume. Yep. And Superman's costume is a great, speaking of the mm. texture thing, mm -hmm. it's a great example of texture abuse. <laughs> it is like a football, that thing. Like every single thing is a different competing texture. And I know they were just like really excited that they had like the Maybe technology to do that. And they were like, texture on this, hands. texture on that, texture. But it's like, ah. It's like so much. No, he, he the does. The most recent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. About, like, the most. Henry yes, Cavill, the yeah. most recent Superman outfit is just like it's literally Velcro. like. Yeah, it's insane. There they went go. a little overboard with that. So, <laughs> uh, I, I'm, y'all, please feel free to stop me at any time. But the, Never. I have so many questions about this stuff, and one is that uh, essentially. Like, costume design in comics and how you translate them to real life both depend on this question of uh, sort of inspiration sources. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there's, there's, uh, bear with me. There's this problem where over time, uh, there's no such thing as something like state, you, you have no choice, there's no such thing as a stable set of meanings. So, the example I'm going to use here is like, Disneyland can never be stable. Because when it opened in what, the 50s? Mm -hmm. uh, anyone? Uh, Late when, 50s, I think, right? Late 50s, early 60s. When Disneyland opened, Main Street looked like whatever, 1910s or 1900s, like Main Street in a small town. And when Disneyland opened, Main Street looked like 1910s, and it looked like what your grandparents might remember from when they were a child. Par now, yeah. 50 years later, only one of those things can stay true. It can either look like the 1910s, or it can look like what your grandparents remember from being a child. They have to choose in everything, like which of those things they're gonna be faithful to. Uh, in this case, you know, Disneyland's Main Street has stayed faithful to the, like, it looks approximately like I can, a 19th I, I can actually, I can tell you exactly what it looks like because I have way too much knowledge about Disneyland. It is, it is the childhood of Walt Disney. It was like very much, he was like, I want the Main Street I remember as a child that filled me with joy and that's what I'm building. 
that. But I essentially, like, yeah. That's but now that's so far. Yeah, and, and thank, you, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Chief uh, is the best. So now, if you go to Disneyland and you're like, I want something that looks like my grandparents. Remember, you have to go to like Cars Land, um, mm. where it's like now it's the 50s and 60s as a nostalgic backdrop, which feels weird to me as a thing. But it's like that's the same dome. distance they as it dome? was originally. It's like a Burning Man dome. They have like a full-on like like hexi hexadome, like the big. Yeah, like the like Land? psychedelic. Cars yeah. Land. What? Have we not gone to Disneyland in a while? We should. I haven't been in like a year. Oh, there, shit. there, there I used to, to be. There was a poster in there that said "Burning Car" or "Burning Van." Burning Van. But like, what? we have not like we've looked for it a thousand. times. I remember times the burning. I got a picture of it. Did you really? I was like, I've this never is... seen it. I've only heard tale of it. The burning, the burning van poster was briefly on the outside. So, so there's a tie dye biodome that yeah, that's right at the dome, entrance. Yeah. Yeah. dome that's right by the entrance where the where the hippie van lives from the movies, right. where he sells healthy snacks. It's literally what they do in that dome is it's just where you can buy fruit and juice and mm -hmm. things that are not bad for kids. It's like all the healthy snacks are there. <laughs> so, you know, it's where uh, it's children's happiness else? goes to die. Um, oh, yeah, my there we go. God. Burning Man. Chief, you're killing me. Oh, my me. God. That's so great. Burning Man Festival. Burning Man Festival. With the ticket. Oh, my God. With the ticket. Wow. That's adorable. Uh, Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Jefferson Airstream. <laughs> Oh my God! And the Crosby. four doors. Oh my God! Oh, oh my God! I love oh, that. Cruzy. It's Cruzy Stills and Nash. Cruzy Stills and Nash. <laughs> so Man, many puns. I think. Oh, God, so that's many so puns. Funny. So Superman's trunks are like Disneyland's Main Street. Yes. Uh, you can either keep them or have the same meaning. You can't technically do both because uh, costumes in the first generation of superheroes were roughly, by and large, inspired by the actual things that you would see athletes and strong people, like mm -hmm. strongman yeah. performers wore like these kind of leotards. We associate that with a really buff guy who is strong. Why wouldn't you have a really buff guy who is strong wearing the same thing that you associate with that? Yeah. Now, if that stayed strictly true, then outfits would keep updating to reflect what like athletic folks or soldiers or whatever wear. And so sometimes that happens, and sometimes it doesn't, and sometimes I like it, and sometimes I don't. But I want to know where y'all stand on that, in terms of like update it so that it's the same inspiration but for a new time, or let it just be Superman's trunks because those are Superman's trunks. That's what I, he looks like and has I, looked like. I have feelings here. I prefer the iconic look. I think that the look should be updated, but I prefer. So like when they were like, ah, no more Superman's uh, trunks. I was like, no, what am I? This what, was what, circa what? 2011. Yeah, mm -hmm. like with the new 52. I was like, Cause but movies. Superman has red trunks. Like, yeah. And I'm not opposed to change. And I think it's interesting to play around with looks and stuff like that. Like when um, uh, Michael, uh, J. Michael Straczynski did uh, worked on Doctor Strange and gave him like, instead of a cloak, gave him like a really cool robe and everything. Yeah. Like the coat. Like that was awesome. But like that also didn't, even then I was like, well, that, but that's not Doctor Strange. Like that's cool. It's cool. I like that. That's a fun one-off. But don't let that be the only th like in the the current run uh, of Doctor Strange where he doesn't have the giant like Dracula collar, mm -hmm. but he still has the cloak of levitation, and it can be a hoodie. Some I was like, that's cool. That's a fun adaptation. The cloak still looks mostly like the cloak of levitation. Like, but like I I prefer sort of like the classic hallmarks of those characters. I prefer to stay to that. I, Personally, I go I, I go character by character. There are characters that want to move into the future, and there are characters that are rooted in their history really, really strongly. Superman is a character that is rooted very much in a time and place. That very is true. Never going away. And the other thing I will say, and this like really, and the thing, and like in some characters this doesn't bother me, but with him it really did. And I, maybe it's the color blue. I don't know. The but, Superman costume bothered me too, and I can never. There quite... was. There was no but break in the line, why? like like the, it was like a man in a in a unitard. So interesting that you're bringing a that up. Very bumpy unitard. A very bumpy unitard that, <laughs> that was like that was like I want and like there was no modesty to it, which is also a thing about the character. I like him having some modesty, um, and I like that it also it breaks aww. everything up really nicely. So yeah. it, uh, uh, in doing some some prep for this show, I found a great article on Comics Alliance. Um, uh, Chief, you'll really free, have to forgive me. I think I think it might be called Design Choice or uh, Design Superman or something like that. But they they pointed out that the trunks uh, of Superman uh, help define the masculinity while also breaking up those lines, and that they also do the same thing. Yeah, here uh. we go. So this artist <laughs> took out the trunks. So the middle is no trunks at all. The far right is no trunks, but with a groin line. 
and the point that they were trying to make is of all these of all three of these the one on the left for most people appears to be the strongest and the most mm. yeah. vibrant uh, because the other one is like there's no nothing breaking up the lines and on the other side there's a little bit breaking well, up the lines kind of your belt first of all yeah <laughs> yeah right but like so that that was the thing that they were pointing out and chief right underneath that uh, the the title F4 you can see sort of this practice um, with the Fantastic Four because the Fantastic Four are mostly just like, here's Reed Richards in a blue suit, and here's Sue Storm, she's invisible, and here's Human Torch, she's on fire, and you can still see their trunks <laughs> in there. Like, even though, like, because they just, yeah, see, you can barely just see it. Trunks, yeah. trunks, trunks. Oh, yeah. Trunks doom. Torch's trunks are the, the funniest inclusion here. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, agreed. But like even on Mr. Fan. They made sure to they made sure to draw it. Pants on fire. <laughs> and like Invisible Woman is invisible, but we can still see her uh her tushy. Yeah. <laughs> her her tush outline. So uh, and, it was and, it was an interesting article. It was on Comics Alliance. I can't remember exactly where, but it was it was a pretty interesting article that I found on uh, I'll the necessity of those design choices, especially because of the four color printing and everything else. And I, and so. I don't know if this is still true, but it was true back in the day when I worked in prop fabrication for a hot minute mm -hmm. in, the, in the worst shop on earth, which is a whole other story. Is that, is that the hips are really difficult to deal with? Like anytime yeah. you're building armor or like trying to build any plates that move around, this Tell is where everything oh, falls yep. the fuck apart. Yep. What? Why? What? What is? You you're just, agreeing to. You have to make sure they can still bend their legs, and it's actually like really easy to design stuff to where they can. <laughs> like that's basically it. <laughs> it's yeah. There's Gotta a make lot sure of the people can parts. move. Yeah. Something comic book artists do not actually have to worry about because no. they can just mm -hmm. assume that right. anyone can do anything. Well, that does other. happen sometimes when we get designs too from the designer. Sometimes there's things where it's like, hey, if we build this the way this is drawn, they won't be able to like bend their arm, or they won't be able to. When we then we have to like submit that as a like request to change. Like, hey. We figured this out. Like we are indeed this, and this isn't gonna work. How can we like redesign this so it will? <laughs> oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> Which is why you get a Batman who can't turn his head. Yep. Right. Exactly. That's how Michael that happened. Keaton, yep. That's how that. For happened. both of those movies, I think. Right. I'm uh, surprised that that went through. Like I think about that all the time, where I'm like, how could they have let them like that poor actor like? If I recall, they like they thought it was going to work and then it didn't or something but like that. But how could they have not figured out it was going to work until they were like on set? Like that's crazy. I mean like, <laughs> I was going to say you've been on enough sets that you know things happen occasionally. Like, no, well, that's that true. Happened. That's true. It just seems like a the large right oversight. The right hand and the left hand oh. thought they'd worked it out and then yeah. it arrived on set. I assume <laughs> everybody else is organized and it's just everywhere that you are that's just chaos. Uh, uh, by the way, I want to remind everyone that we will be doing our five minute topic. We forgot we didn't to tell you about that. Sorry, oh, Sorry dear. That's it's okay. not a big deal. Uh, get us your five-minute uh, topic suggestions, and we yes. will we will do that at the end of the show. Five-minute topic is just <laughs> we have five uh, in the chat. They'll give us some suggested topics. Our producer Liz will choose one. Oh, cool! And it'll be like we have to just answer their. If you could have any but... superhero costume design, what would it be and why? Oh my God! There's so many questions. There's yeah. so many questions so, today. And then mm -hmm. we have five minutes for all four of us to give our answer. Okay. What's well, an under pressure cool. thing, but it, it it's fun. I like it. You'll enjoy it. You'll okay. tolerate it. You'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy you'll it enjoy and you'll it. like it. God, you'll <laughs> you'll it, like it, man. This is what Burning okay. Man is, by the way, people. What's Amazing. That? Now, uh, occasionally, what? like, I, 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 there are a million great questions in here. Occasionally, a, a radical redesign for a costume, like, sticks or, or becomes part of someone's permanent repertoire. Mm. I'm thinking of uh, the Paul Smith run on the X-Men, where he took oh, a bunch yeah. of perfect designs, and then he was like, well, it's the late 80s now, what if blah? And we got Storm with a mohawk and a punked out look. Yeah. And it's not always her look, but now it is something that we think of as integral well, to her. Also, mm -hmm. the, the X-Men were very uniform for a while, and then... And then double blah, and then I, I mean, like it's the, the X Men have gone through so Grant many Morrison. different iterations. Yeah, I love the Morrison run of the X Men. I love the yeah. Morrison. I'm literally wearing a Morrison X Men costume. Yeah, you are. Right now. Yeah, yeah, you this are. Is literally it. You're yeah. mutant and proud. We know it. And I've got the little, <laughs> the little breaks. I love like except that all of his stuff was leather and rubber. It was all. It was, he was actually. Yeah, I found this, and I actually, I uh, this is from an artist, and I normally try nice. and just source specific stuff. But, um, oh, I see Gen X on the right. But this is this is um, uh, this is Mod Hero. So I'm actually going to do a shout out because I own a lot of art from these guys. Mod Hero, you can find them on Society Six. M O D H E R O. Uh, and yeah, he, he he did a whole run of like different X Men uniform, like the the school uniforms, which I really really loved, and like went through all the different years mm -hmm. of how they've gone from like blue and black and 
black and yellow, the black and yellow, and the red and, and yellow, yellow for, and and yellow. for for Jen for net for. Uh, I'm Jen. glad you. I was thinking it. I knew you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a fun fact: Manzi is a giant fan of '90s hip hop. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a thing. <laughs> Got you're, a you're, big playlist for Burning Man <laughs> for y'all. Our, our first Burning Man, she was like, hey, I don't have, a, like, I don't have a, uh, I'm not going to have a phone out there. And she asked me to, like, have, like, a 90s playlist downloaded on my phone. And I, oh, yeah. I use your playlist Here's for what we're going to need. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, That's it, amazing. It just makes me feel yeah. ashamed. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, when you were like, I love 90s hip hop. I was like, what? Yeah, everyone was like, what? I was like, isn't that weird? I, like, I don't know. <laughs> I like this from Miss Sunflower. Uh, question, oh, what was your biggest struggle transitioning from cosplay to costuming? Oh, ah. I guess that's a great question, actually. Um, I guess it was just kind of getting my foot in the door. I sort of happened upon a thing for my first job. Um, I was just being a cosplayer, and I actually had an animation job that I hated. Um, one of my friends from college actually randomly got a job at a prop shop and was like, messaged me and was like, hey, I know you're trying to do this. Like, your cosplays are awesome. Uh, he's hiring. Do you want to just come in? Like, do you want to come in tomorrow? Like, it was literally just a random, hey, are you available? Can you come in and start this crazy new thing? And, uh, and I ended up working there for a couple months at this, at this shop and met people through there. And then it kind of snowballed through there from there. And, People that worked at that shop recommended me at other shops, and then I got started building like a client base and stuff. So it was really just kind of a random happenstance thing of luck, like a stroke of luck that my friend happened to be at a shop and was like, hey, you want to come work at this shop? I was like, oh, God, yes. Um, but I will say that I'm, I'm all freelance. I'm completely freelance. I bounce around doing a million different things. I will say it has taken a long time to build up the momentum of having enough clients and having enough people to call when I need work and that whole thing. So that part is definitely like not for the faint of heart. No. It's definitely a struggle sometimes mm -hmm. and it has been a struggle. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. very proud of where I am like five, six years later, but it has been time where uh, there has been times where I'm like, oh God, was this the right career choice? Like, oh shit. It's, so, it's tough getting that through people's head, the, the, the luck-based economy that that's a yeah, that it is Los Angeles. Just yeah. Luck, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, you got to be good at what you do, but that's only like yeah. step one through three. <laughs> right. So, like being really like, good. I, I, I knew how to make costumes kind of because I was cosplaying and I mean, I sort of had a skill. Um, and I had put it out there in the universe that that's what I wanted. So my friends like knew I was looking for that kind of mm -hmm. thing. So they knew mm -hmm. to look out for me if something came up. And then something did. So was this, what was his first gig? Was this, the, this wasn't the Skyrim stuff or this was probably way no i that. but i did actually get the job because of my skyrim cosplay are you serious yes that is not surprising at all i like submitted my cosplay portfolio to the prop shop and was like ah, i do some things sometimes and they were like oh this is cool like good enough like because you know the, the first job i was on i was literally just like cutting foam pieces out it wasn't like a labor intensive sure. thing like anyone could do it but it was just it was what i needed to get my foot in the door yeah, yeah, yeah. it just kind of took off from there so so the struggle probably then would be going from like in theory with cosplay, you can kind of decide for yourself like what your deadline is going to be because if you yeah. can't do it this season, like maybe you'll get it done for next year. I didn't get it done for uh, Comic Con, but maybe I can get it done for Dragon Con because I'm right. that one too. Yeah, you're your own boss yeah. for cosplay. Whereas, I mean, I, I know people do struggle with that. Um, that's something I actually I love being told what to do. So I was like, hell yeah, like I'll do whatever, like. Like a place to focus your energy, mm. right? Yeah. So that wasn't a problem for me. Um, I was, I was very much like, yeah, I'll just do this. Thing. Yeah, I kind of liked not having to be my own boss. I guess it's yeah. nice when someone else is taking the reins. But I do, I do have experience with people. Yeah, who yeah. Have, who have? Yep. There we are. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, like the helmet There's is like, not yours, but everything oh, else. Yeah, is. yeah. The, hel Hi. the helmet is actually Vulpin Props, which I'm oh. sure you guys are familiar with. Yes. Um, he's he's an amazing prop maker in Atlanta. Um, he lent that to me so I could shoot it with my costume. Uh, and, but yeah, and that's that was my you in the suit, also. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, and I made that in 2011, I think. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. We told you, Manzi's a badass. We weren't kidding. <laughs> yeah. No, like, it's. It I goes wish big. I had time to make cosplays that elaborate, but now I just. No, it's okay. Make costumes now you're for making living Savitar. and now. Is that the other oh, struggle darn. where you're like, now I'm I'm doing like 60 hours a week of somebody else's foam? Yes. Like, yes. I, I mean, I I I'm happy about it. I'm happy where I am, but I, I'm like, oh man, free time. But it, I think that's just like I'm an adult now too. No, and it's like anytime, <laughs> anytime we talk to you, it's like I'm going away for three weeks, and you go away for three weeks, and then you're like, I'm back, but now yeah, I have oh the flu. Gosh. Yeah. I was like, so you get a three-week uh -huh. job, and then there's a two-week flu at the end oh, of it. Oh, I know. Oh then, my god, then you, it's then sucks. you have a week off, then you get a four-week job. Yeah. Sometimes either you guys are like, hey, you want to like. Or we're doing this thing, and I'm like, I'm working until 
3 a.m. today. Yeah. Sorry, y'all. Like, it's just, it's worth but it. But we're though. so proud. Oh, we're, thank you. We're so proud. Chasing those dreams, man. It takes a uh, lot of time. So yeah. going back to cosplay, what, if you had the time to work on it, what cosplay would you make right now? That's oh my good. God, I'm oh, so. Sorry, in. I didn't mean to steal it. No, it's perfect. Okay. No. I'm so into Monster Hunter right now. Monster yes. Hunter World. I'm obsessing about it. All of my free time, I'm killing monsters. I'm terrified to I play. I want to play. Game. I want to make a Monster Hunter armor set. Uh... I'm very curious. Have you noticed differences in terms of like? I would imagine that uh, while many of the ideas behind them, like our assumptions about what armor or costumes look like are set by a million different things, and those are probably shared between different types of artists. But do you get different designs coming out of, say, video games versus comics based on the fact that, like, in the methods of creating and presenting those to your audience are so different? Like, do video games tend to have designs that play more to big, blocky shapes because that's easier to animate, whereas yes. in comics you get, like, ones that flow along a line with a couple of tick marks because that's easier to draw? Does that question make sense? Yes, it does make sense. And I and I do think you're onto something, but I think it varies so wildly with mm. just what the style I mean it's it's really a stylization question. Yeah. Um, it comes down to what the style of video games tend to be a lot more stylized. They can be a lot more cartoony. Whereas, you know, if you're building something for a human, it's gotta fit. Don't on want a human, human body. <laughs> yeah, so so I think that I think it's really just a stylistic thing. But I I too tend to like uh, what you mentioned. Designs with. I just I, I know what you post, so I'm already like giggling. So okay, <laughs> I do tend to like Twitter. big like designs with big flashy like pieces and huge chunky shapes. Like I really like that kind of thing personally. I yeah. think it's fun. So Final Fantasy <laughs> swords. I yeah. Think, oh, like, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Bu Buster sword. Oh yeah. I know that because of my wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because you're not a nerd or anything. No. Matt Key, the normal guy. Matt Key, the normal guy. <laughs> normal guy. It's a, oh, it's on your that's card such now. a funny dig. <laughs> oh. Matt Key, the normal guy. Just a normal Normie. dude over here. <laughs> Extremely normal Matt. Most Extremely, normal. We're all very normal people. All of us right Having here. a normal so conversation normal. about normal stuff. <laughs> yep. <laughs> 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 oh my god, exactly. Nice. I, 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 have, I have to admit, I, I, I loved it at uh, WonderCon. There were a couple of fans who were like, oh my god, you, you're as tall as you are on camera. I was like, yes. Camera actually Not removed. As it. tall as you are on camera yeah, is such a I funny thing to say. My response would be, how big is your monitor? Dear yeah. god. <laughs> yeah, they got like, what, a 6'4 six, six, monitor? Projecting on the wall. Like, <laughs> I'm not Why standing in every shot. I sit into the frame. I don't know why they meant that. But. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Um, oh man. There's so much I know there's so much here. good stuff. People are asking a lot of questions. Oh yay, I'm glad. Also, my favorite comment so far, far is like you go to the fabric store and like I'm looking for something yellow with a bunch of R's on it and they're like <gasps> I know what oh, you're doing. I'm like, yeah. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna something need a yellow, but R's. I need a lot of R's in the print. <laughs> they're like, I oh, got just the thing. <laughs> uh, it's from yeah. our sidekick collection. <laughs> Uh, you're not allowed to say what you're working on next. Are you working on anything? Oh, right now? I am allowed to say yeah, what I'm are. working on now because it's been announced, but I can't really like reveal anything about gotcha. it. Gotcha. Um, I'm working on the boys for <sighs> Amazon. There is going to be a series of the boys. We have Amazon not talked exclusive. about the boys, but we will talk about the boys. <sighs> yeah. I love that book. And it has been announced, so I'm allowed to say that, but I can't really discuss anything else. And I'm, I read the screenplay for that like 10 years ago. I was like, all right, I'm on board. Okay, I'm that's on board. Good for the movie? Mm -hmm. But okay. it's, I'm sure it's like completely. Well, this is a series. It's a series, yeah. yeah. But like it was in development hell for, it's been around for like that long. Is, oh, wow. That's what I'm suggesting. Wow. They must have started trying to adapt that one right away. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Yep. Yes, they did. There we are. Yep. <laughs> is uh, is Simon Pegg going to be in it the way that Garth Ennis imagined him being in it? <laughs> Simon. Simon. You know what? That's so funny. I talked about being on The Boys on Twitter, and someone was like, oh, Simon Pegg is too old. And I was like, what does Simon Pegg have to do with this comic? Like, I was so confused for a second. But he based the, the character on the, Simon Pegg? Yeah. I, I, I think so. Has like, he okay. admitted it, or do we all just assume that? Yeah, I mean, like, someone was heated about it like on that. Twitter. <laughs> I, I, it looks like Simon it looks Pegg. It looks like Simon Pegg. It looks like right. Simon Pegg. That's Simon, yeah. Yeah, I, and I think it was intended to be, so. Well, he's been cast, actually, and it's not Simon Pegg. I'm not sure who it is, but. It's not. Well. Well, and yeah. speaking of Suicide Squad, I believe they just got Katana to be. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. Winner. Oh, yes, I am well now done, officially Chief. on board. Well, well done. done yeah. Could be Quijandro. Cool. Yeah, that'll do it. Well, <laughs> we will have Quijandro on soon. Uh, most likely to talk about so, Deadpool. So, so one of the things I really like about modern superhero costumes, as I, like in the comic books, is that we've gotten away from the spandex, the like the tight, ridiculous spandex look, and people have actually started playing with texture 
and form actually in the books. Like, like, like plating and stuff like that. Or yeah. even like Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel is a perfect example of what I like about modern superhero mm -hmm. suits is that she's, she's not wearing anything skin tight. She, I mean, like it's, it's, it's got all the iconography, but it's, it's interesting and it's got a lot of kineticism to it. And even the Captain Marvel suit, even the, the more modern one. I love the Captain is, Marvel redesign, yeah. It, Same. It's, it's a body suit. It's a flight suit. Mm -hmm. it, like, it actually like, speaks to the character or like the way that they even earlier reimagined like the Wally West suit when they were going in and taking him away from the original Flash, or not the original Flash, but the Silver Age Flash, uh, and giving yeah. him, God, so, yeah, look at that. I love it. Oh, look at that helmet. I the guess buttons. the star's always that design. low, and I'm just crazy. Oh, yeah, it right? is. It's yeah. like right in the middle of her boobs. Right there. But I like do even wish the she buttons had the asymmetrical like sash. Mm -hmm. the I want yeah. her to have the, the sash. Did sash. they just decide that that would not work in a movie? It, it might show Would it work fun. in a movie? Uh, it depends on how much action is happening. Okay. Flying. Yeah. Because it would flying, like flop would around great. everywhere, or yeah, it would flop so around capes, awkwardly. Capes look great while flying. I like flying capes. Well, capes look great. Oh, we do have an important question from chat. Capes or no capes? Oh, my, my personal preference? Mm. Uh, it depends. It totally, I love a good cape if, it, it's, if it's contextual. Mm -hmm. Doctor Strange cape, very good cape. Tim, Tim Drake, Tim, 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 little, Tim, yep. little Timmy from, from, from Teen Titans. I'm excited that they put him in the black yes. and yellow. Mm -hmm. There's so many black capes yellow, in that show yellow. and they're just <laughs> Oh, great. so, yes, uh, just getting, so you got to work on one of the most, in my opinion, I know you probably can't talk about it much because there's only one photo of it, one of the most complicated what were you thinking capes in superhero, uh, in, super, in the world of superheroes? I think I know who you're talking about. You know exactly who I'm talking about, because it's the cape that makes me go, why did you do this? What Same. were you thinking? I think I know what you're talking Which about. Which is Dove. Yes. Yep. I, I dove. actually worked heavily on the Dove cape, specifically. Oh! What's wrong um, with Dove's cape? It, it doesn't... It, it, Okay, can we have a picture? There's it's a, so a, cool. It's, it's a Dove comic, I think is the name of the, of the, of the image. Uh, it, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Manzi, I'm trying to Manzi Dove it now. Comic. If I Manzi remember Dove correctly, Dove Hawk's comic. cape was strangely they're, complicated too. They're all weirdly like McFarlane. Hawk does have yes. Hawk does have a weird yes. Okay, so that's you what you guys it. did. I mean, gorgeous. Um, you can't see the whole cape here. It is so like, freaking cool. Let's just add spikes that will never look that good in real life because they'll all fall flat in like weird, right, awkward right. ways. Well, see, I don't see them like spikes. I see that. them as like yeah, feathers. Yeah, they're feathers. They no, are, in this iteration, in the, for the show, they are definitely feathers. They yeah. are full feathers. Um, look at that. I mean. And Hawk's cape is like is like three or four like, like long, um, they're just long, oh, yeah. like shapes. It's not a whole cape. It's almost like wings. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But like, but like turning that into a real thing, I knew it would just be like, Does like you're never gonna put a hawk and dove on camera because there's no way, like, unless you want to sit and like CG every movement that this poor actor makes. No, that yeah. makes sense. I guess I've I had never like I had just accepted that design is like, yeah, it looks cool. You can draw them like. Just like comic book hair, which always has body for some reason. Yeah, but yeah. Like you can make sure that the cape is looking good, and it, I guess that would be very, very difficult. No, it's that, it's that cosplay photo where like the, the costume like looks awkward and weird until you get three friends to help you. You're about to take the shot, and they yeah. all throw yeah. the cape out. Throw and you the take cape, the and then shot, it looks great. And then click, the and then shot, it's like yeah. perfect. But it was like a millisecond. Uh huh. Well, first shot. Uh, the dove cape is very interesting. I think I can talk about it because I mean it's not like. Just be, be careful, kind of, we don't want to get yeah, you in trouble or anything. Oh, like no, that. I mean, whatever, there's kind of a photo of it. It's, um, <laughs> there's a photo of half of it. It's amazing. It's, um, it, you can, she, she puts her, her arm out and it, like, flays out like a wing. Oh. It's an actual designed oh. thing that has an understructure that, that folds out into a full wing and then folds down into a cape. Wow. Where they oh, all kind of cool. layer on top of each other, all the f individual feathers. It is so cool. The only thing is, it's so heavy. I feel bad for that girl because it's so heavy and so cumbersome, but it's the coolest looking thing I'll ever. It. Yeah, it's so cool. When we finished it, we all took turns trying it on because we were just like, yeah. Like, can you, can you <laughs> estimate how much it weighs? Um, gosh, I, I mean, I'm a weakling. So it's probably only like 20 it. pounds, but I was I thought that was like a lot. It's a lot of cake. Especially for just like, you know, walking around in that. Well, like, like the weight yeah. distributes in something like that too. Right. But like, yeah. As but I was like, chain mail. dang, so it sucked to wear for like five hours, however long she's gonna wear it, you know, so. Oh. But it looks great. She's looks, gonna suffer for fashion a little bit, but it, you know, it's, it's what super how it goes. Do. Yeah. Fashion. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, no, I mean, like, that was, that's, that's, that's fabulous. A, that's a perfect example of one of those things where I see in a comic book, I'm like, you, you, you can't do it. You just, you just, yeah. you just, yeah, you just, just can't do it. Although I guess we're getting to the point where you can. <laughs> you can, yeah. Apparently. 
Yeah. Which I'm very I'm very excited about Titans. I'm very very. Excited. Oh, me Same. too. Do I we, am do too. Do we have premiere dates for that or anything yet? Or I actually, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Uh, huh. Um. Uh, I think do it's we have any other year. questions? Um, we do. I also, at some point, want to show my favorite thing that you've done recently because I am a weird. Nerd. Oh yeah, I oh, love wait, that I you wanna, love it. Let's just do it now. Why? Okay, why do it so there's eventually. a thing. There's a thing that there's either labeled super kind or super cruel. Um, so a friend of ours shoots these ridiculous PSAs for yes. the Metro. Yes, our friend Mike Diva, which the internet might know mm -hmm. about. Mike yeah. Diva, the meme. The meme connoisseur. Yeah. Um, artisanal memes. Art artisanal memes. Uh, That's such a good way to put it. It's really what he does. He kind of is artisanal. Yeah. Oh. He, was, he was hired he through, through a weird series of things that, that, will, that is a long story that I will tell over drinks. He was hired by the MTA, or he will tell over drinks, uh, to create uh, little videos about how to be nice on the subway and on the bus. And he decided to turn it into a Japanese Sentai, Sentai Bishonen hero mm -hmm. called Superkind. Who battles uh, Rude Boy? Yeah, Rude Dude. Rude Dude. Rude Dude. Rude dude. I forgot that's it's coming up. Yeah. Uh, uh, who's really awful on the subway? Rude Dude does rude things on the subway and on the bus, and Superkind has to stop him by teaching him good manners. And, and, and Superkind is Anna Akana, is, right? Is played by yes. is played Anna, by the internet's Anna, own Anna Akana. Anna Akana, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. apparently for the new season of, of PSA. Oh, the new season, yeah. <laughs> Season two we did a of second MTA round. PSAs. Yeah. Season two PSAs. There is some sort of evil, and I don't know why. I have no context for this. Do you but want if we context? Have it, I can tell you. No, no, no. I okay. want to be surprised. Okay. I want to be surprised. But uh, is, it, is the official name Super Cruel? No, uh, there is no official There's name. No official we were name. just calling her Super Cruel because it makes that was me funny. so happy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do, can we have that picture? Do we? Do we? There should be a Super Cruel uh, or Super Kind image in the main book somewhere. Yeah, I know what you're talking. The, the, yeah, it, the the internet should uh, Wednesday Club Wednesdays. Uh, go look up Mike Diva MTA, or uh, yeah, or Mike Diva like Metro. It, on, yeah, and it will Mike make Diva you. Metro. It will make yeah. your day. You will be showing Fantastic. it to everyone you know, and it's just filled with goodness and light. It's great. Well, everything Mike's, Mike yeah. makes is the best thing. Oh no, super kind. Ah, oh. ah. Oh. Well, way to fail, us, I know. I just ruined it. I have it way on my to... phone. I just put my phone all the way I know. to the camera. I yeah. Can. Actually, ah, oh, ah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, I'm just going to go to your, is it on your Instagram? I'm just it is on my Instagram. I'll go to your Instagram while we're talking okay. and I'll show it off because I can do that. Uh, okay. Well, and while you guys are doing that, I forgot to also show off Liz's <gasps> Hellboy print. Oh, she my got, God. That's awesome. Which is, is oh. also oh. pretty. She, film. She, she wanted me to show that off, and uh, wow. I think it's, it's worthy of being shown off. Is that WonderCon Hall? This is WonderCon, yeah. Amazing. Uh, so, I, 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 uh, Liz, I apologize. I forgot to show that off, but uh, I showed it off. Uh, so there's bigger. a bunch of great questions in here. Uh, for some reason, a bunch of <laughs> y'all are sort of on board with my soapbox earlier. We, we have a number of questions uh, ranging from the broad to the highly targeted, uh, such as <laughs> how can the reign of Power Girl's boob window be ended? I would say by closing how it. How can it be ended? <laughs> um, uh, in what way? <laughs> I, I think that they just want I to feel the stuff. actual answer I, is less male designers, please. I, 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 have, I have an easy answer to how, about a, a perfectly good reason to close that boob, boob window, which is to improve the quality of actress willing to play that part. So there you or go. Or the lives of the people willing. Yeah, yeah, like if you want to have a really serious actress play that part, put her in a, as they said with Scarlet Witch, I promise you we won't put you in a suit that's going to make, like, that Much was, as I want her to have that, oh, whatever and, that yeah. is, that oh, no, and they thing that, that she's wearing. That made me sad that they never hit that, and there were ways that they could have made that work, but like I, a lot I of that costume that was like, they actually had to go to Elizabeth Olsen and say, we promise we will never put you in this. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, that was part of the deal, was like, you are not going to be walking around in a goddamn corset. It is yeah. weird. We do not represent our industry well, our, our art form well. And there's no problem with, oh, so, so this is, I'm so, you, you did this, you did this whole, like, was this yours? Is this your Yeah, terrible? it was my, it was my design. Uh, it was her. it was based off the old super kind uh, design that uh, Lauren of Castle Corsetry designed. Mm. But yeah, that's that's it. It's on my Instagram if you guys want to see it. There's it's made of spikes. I'm sorry about the about the white. What's your? Uh, it is Instagram made of spikes. Oh, there, there we are. Is. Yay! It is just and is the villain of Metro. I don't even know yeah, yet, but it yeah. is the is like the it's, evil. It's uh, it's metal super kind basically. That's, we, that's, we that's, that's cool. the director and writer Mike. Yeah, that's Mike. Mike Diva yeah. being. 
who also being gets Mike. Down with us. Being we have Mikey. the coolest oh, camp. Nice. Pre- like we, we really do. Friend, yeah, we like really do. And we're all like really close. It's so nice. It's great. I miss Mike. I love you guys. Yeah. I love you. I, love I love you. haven't seen you in so long. It's so nice. <laughs> we needed to make costumes. I know. I want to oh, hire you to make stuff forever. Oh, no. Make stuff forever. <laughs> yeah. I love this question. Night C uh, asks topic: Which male hero has the best fashion sense? Which has the worst? How would you improve it? Oh my gosh. Mm. That is a That's good a great question. question. Just some bad Wonder Man Whoa. costumes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah. US agent I'm not a fan of. Oh. It's pretty bad. Derivative. That, was, that and started as Captain America, and then it was another guy. And like, I always like it when they make costumes, like black, dark, gothy versions of his. No. Um, <laughs> I think Batman's got a pretty solid fashion sense. Yeah, but it's not John Paul Valley. <laughs> Asriel? Asriel. Asriel. Well, I didn't say Asriel. I, I was like, Batman. I was like, there's a Batman. He that just has... reminded Talison of yeah. a, uh, of bad fashion sense. Uh, uh, Cable. Oh, Cable's awful. Oh. Oh yeah. <laughs> I like I like that we're like we're using Deadpool to like almost like Deadpool is going to be a whole movie making fun of what Cable looks like, which I'm really oh, excited yeah, I'm about. Oh yeah, I'm very excited about that. I'm, um, I'm into that. You can only really have Cable in a in a Deadpool movie. In my Creeper. Opinion. Not a fan of Creeper. No. Oh, Creeper's got something going on. That's a look. It's a, lo- it's a look. <laughs> it's a look. It's a look. He got this like weird boa thing. <laughs> Let creeper be creeper. Uh, I'm not saying uh, I'm not saying he can't be creeper, but the question was who has bad fashion sense? Yes, that's creeper. fair. That's fair. Who looks Who looks good? Creeper's no got what. a creep. I get it. Yeah. One thing that I love is is not just in costume design, but in like everyday fashion sense. Uh, uh, characters will certainly like they're they're. Their levels of fashion savvy will vary widely because certain artists just don't pay attention to that, and other artists really excel at it. Right. Uh, so, like the, the the book, The Runaways, has been marked by a couple mm. of runs with especially strong uh, artists who pay attention to how kids dress. Mm-hmm. Um, originally, Adrian Alfona, like that was one of the signature things that made that book stand out to me, was that rather than wearing sort of someone's default idea of what clothing is. They took, picked up on sort of the, the time-honored and well-honed art of costume design to reveal character and establish a place in time, and they made all those kids look really distinct, with a, obviously with a colorist and, uh, as part of the team. Uh, and uh, Chris Anka is doing it now on the new Runaways thing where he's, re- he's releasing lookbooks for like how he's, you know, that's so cool. Um, for like this was my my thing for oh. for issue five. Like, she, oh, of course, Nico has four cool. different outfits yeah, in this. Well, you know, w- with the Wicked and Divine people do that too. W- Wicked and Divine, where like the characters yeah. change outfits all the time, but you always like they they have such a strong sense of fashion that you always know, even if their their faces and in the shot, you know who's who just by what they're wearing. Well, and this is a thing where I I one of those pieces coming together moments. I saw uh, Gillian McKelvey on a panel at, at San Diego Comic Con where you. Jamie McKelvey referenced. Oh, it was a really good panel. I, just, I know, I just have to say that every time. Uh, uh, but, but Jamie McKelvey referenced a, a, a really influential book for him being when he first got a collection of Paul Smith X-Men. And I was like, maybe everything would have happened the same way, but it feels like that's a puzzle piece falling into place. Like, uh, the guy who did the fashion makeovers of the X-Men was an influence on Jamie McKelvey, who did Young Avengers and Phonogram and always, always, always thinks about like so, that stuff. So here's the place in the X-Men where I'm torn. I'm just gonna I'm gonna put this there, which is that I love team uniforms. I love Same. I love school uniforms. I love the idea, but I I love them specifically when they are given to characters and then the characters fuck with them. Same. <laughs> that's that's I I, I, I feel like that's them? important. To totally you personal. Yeah, I love yeah. that too. Like Quentin Quire looks best when he's wearing an X-Men uniform with with a with a with a like Magneto how does he work shirt or like yeah. Sentinel or Sentinel <laughs> or like whatever bullshit. Well, and I love I love the, uh, the the time the time displaced new X Men mm. with like they all have the uniform but they all have different colors the slightly mm. different colors the slightly and I think that's cut. so rad like that's like such a subtle little thing but yeah or like or like like Chamber putting on the trench coat on top of his on top coat because he's yeah. he's so edgy <laughs> um, oh so edgy or like I mean like perfect example of that is is Legion the TV series mm-hmm. is when they're in the oh, oh, it's coming back it's coming uh, soon yeah. Uh, uh, when they're in the in- mental institution, they're all wearing uh, all the weird, like orange. They're like red. Like, they're red and yellow. They're 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 red and yellow, they're red Gen X. They're Gen X uniforms. They are the Gen X colors with the yellow stripes down the side. It's basically a take on the. It's basically a take on the Generation X uh, baby X Men uniform. 
Did I just rock your world? <laughs> Did I just like take it and just? <laughs> I need to rewatch yeah. Legion right now. I'm already doing that. You can come join me. Okay. It's, like so deep. Yep. Uh, I love that show so much. Yeah, it's it's the Gen X colors. It's red. It's the red and gold. It is a weird thing that like I I it, in I adapting these. I haven't seen it yet. I've heard oh, good things though. I've heard oh, really man, good things. I know. It's so Clearly, so I gotta good. catch up. Man, when you're ready. Uh, yeah. In I, adapting things, you you these you get interesting struggles where like because people didn't know how to make like traditional comp, uh, costumes work or they they what for whatever reasons like. You don't get the same foundation to play with. Where, for instance, I'm, I'm I love my old school New Mutants, and uh, mm -hmm. a key thing about Danielle Moonstar was that they were the first real generation of kid X Men, and one of the strongest personalities in there was Danielle Moonstar, who showed up and was like, "I'm not wearing your uniform unless you let me wear like my cool belt and my boots and like a thing that represents my heritage. This matters to me, and I'm going to fight you about it because I'm a teenager." Like, and that's what that teenagers was, do. Yeah, it was a perfect story of like. Here's what happens when you try to take your ideas of school uniforms and apply them to modern 80s youth. You know, you're you're going to run into stuff like this and the balance that she ends up like she ends up winning the fight to sort of slightly customize her school uniform and that's always been really special to me and I love the way it plays out in the comics, but you can't exactly do that in the films unless you have a bunch of people who wore regular uniforms first. Mm -hmm. Right, never you have to have phase. the distinction, like, this is the thing I added. Yeah. Like, yeah. Then it doesn't, like, it, that's that's a, a challenge for adaptation because people aren't even necessarily reacting to the same things. And if you're not... Sure. But, yeah. like, and but like even Morrison's decisions in the new X-Men, and I know that, like, they, they kind of ran with this in the movies, and I don't think they did them the justice in the movies, in any of the X-Men movies yet, in my opinion. Maybe, maybe for Styles. Was the idea of, like, you have this color palette, and you have these textures, and how you put them together is entirely... So, like... You got like like a lot of people in like the the chunky jacket with a big yellow X. But then you got like Jean Grey, who was literally just all in black with slight yellow highlights, and then literally the Phoenix T-shirt. Mm. And it's just such a strong statement. And then just you know, and then just like Cyclops in the full black and yellow, and the, it just everybody kind of really yeah, embracing. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, uh, everyone if, embracing it. If I may, it. I, it's interesting where superhero comics or movies have come because when we saw X-Men in 2000 they were all in black leather and like Wolverine made a, a joke about like I don't want to wear leather and then Cyclops said would, the, would you rather have yellow on blue spandex and oh, yeah. I remember as a kid being like yeah they reference the comics and now we just get yellow on blue spandex and now like, we, like, now get, we get Star Spangled Captain America it was weird, we, I, I remember it as a thing that we were all simultaneously mm -hmm. like Yay, and also, ouch, but also, yay, yeah. and we're just so glad this movie exists. And yeah. I'm like, you know, I bet you could have pulled it, and like, it broke, it breaks my heart that we never actually, here, here's the one thing that breaks my heart, is we never actually get to see, got, got to see Hugh Jackman in the fucking helmet. Yeah. Not oh, once. Yeah. Well, Gosh. now that Marvel owns Fox, maybe, we'll get to see I may, Like, I would have, like, just once, I would have liked to have seen someone try and put him in the Wolverine mask. I feel like they could have done it in the Wolverine movie yeah. with this whole samurai thing. They could have built a samurai mask for him that was like the Wolverine yeah. mask. Yeah, that would cool. Wouldn't that have been cool? That would have been really and cool. Maybe it would have made that movie a little bit better. Maybe. I, I wasn't know. a fan of that movie. I really wanted to be. It looked good. Yeah, I wasn't. And then either. the third act fell apart. Anyway, third act. Opinions with Matt. How did That's they work? What you came for. Uh, <laughs> uh, so they real... did. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah really I mean, technically they, they did. <laughs> Technically, but not for me. <laughs> this great. is our show. That's <laughs> oh! Yeah, we do. What? Oh, <laughs> my God. You just reframed this entire experience for me. Okay, so I should be giving my opinions. Uh, we, 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 have, we have failed to mention so far that uh, Janet Van Dyne, the Wasp, oh, shit. is on our board behind us. This Thank is you, drawn Ken by Wen. the lovely and wonderful Ken Wen, exceptionally talented artist. Why is what? she on our board, Mackie? Well, Amy... Dallin, I'm glad that you brought that up. Uh, Janet Van Dyne is a, uh, a wardrobe, a fashion designer. I, I couldn't think she of it. She is like, the wasp in designer, but, Marvel yeah. Comics, and she is also canonically a fashion designer. So much Founding so. Avenger. Uh, Founding, Founding Avenger. Of, Thank one of, you. Like, the she reason named the Avengers. She named the Avengers. Uh, she's one of the first ones. She's one of the ones that pulled it together. She's one of the last characters that we get in the MCU. But whatever, we get it. It is okay. Uh, but <laughs> so uh, interesting. She's playing her too. I'm trying to remember. Evangeline Lilly. No, 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 no. She's not. She's not playing. She's not. She's oh not God, Janet. I'm blanking. Yes. Thank you, Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, nice. They said when they did oh, the giant. Oh, Jennifer Dine. Right, 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 right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just love this anecdote. Thank from, you. From, from, that somebody shared from when they did that like giant Marvel photo shoot. 
uh, where they said it was there was something really special about walking around like everywhere you looked there were movie stars literal movie stars but they were like and then the, like the person who came through who just like messed up the gravity of the whole room was Michelle Pfeiffer because even movie stars are like that's Michelle Pfeiffer <laughs> <laughs> She's the, right there. The, the way they introduced her at Comic Con last year uh, in Hall H, like, because that was before we knew who was playing Janet Van Dyne, and the way that they did it was, so they started the whole Marvel panel off with uh, uh, Paul Rudd and oh his friend's name, um, the actor I can't remember, the guy who uh, wanted to whistle all the time. You know who I'm talking about? Uh, Mike, Michael Pena is that his name? Yeah. Um, so it had the two of them narrating to camera the entire time the plot for all of Marvel up to that point. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, and it was so funny. And they were just like, and they were doing it in their own terms. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Captain America, God, he's really handsome. He comes in. And like, <laughs> you don't realize that they're playing their characters. You just think it's, it's Paul Rudd and, and Michael Pena. And then they go, and, and that's, that's, the, that's the MCU. That's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So are you interested? And it turns out this entire five minute narration that you thought was just opening the panel for fun is actually them pitching the MCU to Michelle Pfeiffer. And oh. it turns, the camera then turns to her and she goes, nah guys, I mean, I've done superhero <laughs> things. I, I don't know, if it, uh, uh, I'm not, I don't know. I, it, the suits are really, I don't know. And then Evangeline Lilly comes in and goes, Actually, it's a lot of fun. The designers will pay a lot of attention to the suits. My suit's actually really comfortable. And she goes, really? We should talk. Let's go talk. And the two <laughs> women walk away. And Paul Rudd and Michael Pena are like, wait, so is she doing it? And then like, poof, it cuts to the trailer for it. Oh, that's oh, wonderful. That's so cute. It was like the best way to open the, the panel. Because it was, it was also just like super funny, you know? That's Paul so Rudd adorable. being charming. And like, they were very like, self-deprecating, they made fun of the movies. They're like, yeah, and Thor Dark World happened, we did that, and then there's this, and then there's this. <laughs> and it was just like, all right, like, this is super funny. Like, this is really fun. Yeah, so, anyway. Speaking of the Wasp, yes. I did not know this until I did research for this episode. George Perez, when he was drawing on <coughs> Avengers, drew Janet Van Dyne, the Wasp, in a different outfit every issue. <laughs> Only so, George Perez. <laughs> did not know this, but... She's a fashion designer. Of course she has a different yeah. outfit all the time. That's a cute detail. She changes yeah. her costume. I think she's had more costumes than any other superhero. Any other, so when, so mm -hmm. spoilers for Secret Invasion, if you didn't read that in 2008, uh, go back and read it, uh, she dies. And in an issue that they had called Requiem, they showed every single outfit she's ever worn, and it took three to four pages. I remember that. Yeah. And uh, I, I think she found one of those pages, that, uh, but it, like, yeah. look at that. That's amazing. Like, More yeah, all oh my god, all I love this. A lot of them are famously bad, but it's just delightful. Like she's not afraid oh, of risks. I always love black and gold. That one's uh, good. Again, black and gold. Uh, oh, there's ultimate. The black Wasp. and gold one's my favorite one too. Yeah. 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 Oh god, the purples always get a little weird on her. I love it though. Oh man, oh, I remember that. Oh. Oh, the red and gold I like. Oh, and then again, and this was before she came back, so we didn't have Microworld uh, Janet nope. yet, or any of the nope. other, or the new Wasp character. Nope. Oh my God, just like more. But stuff. I just I thought that was amazing, and like. And uh, Anka, in that same post where he was showing off some of the looks for the newest issue of Runaways, uh, Carolina is wearing like a sports bra, and the sports bra is Van Dyne designs. No where he was like, way. I'm tired of that not being a thing. Like, it should I'm just totally be a awesome. thing. awesome, yeah, thing. Like, totally. Um, uh, clearly, they're out there. She's oh. a, yeah. a fashion designer. This is an entirely oh. different page. Yep, there we go. Look at the boots. Look at the oh. boots on the blue one on the right. I love oh, it. Oh, my God. Oh, I love it. It's so I love the white with the one leg yeah. exposed. Oh. <laughs> God, there was a time in the 90s where that was a thing we were doing. Oh, man. <laughs> oh. Bring it back. <laughs> Look at the, the, with the silver wasp buckle. Oh, my God. That is so and I, if I if I remember correctly, like the, it's it's in canon that she's actually helped design other heroes' so costumes. So there was like, actually a, who, there though. was a running gag several times where where anytime someone was like, I think I'm thinking about changing my look, she would just be like, oh, my place four hours and like she already had models wearing like five basic looks. Oh, that's and, so cute. And like a couple times, it was eventually I think it was like Jessica Jones who was like, wait, this is the second one of these I found. It was the same suits. You're just trying to pawn off the <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. I see your game, Janet Van Dyne. She's like, no, this is just a lookbook. It's just a this lookbook. Just a lookbook. Oh. Uh, so I, I also thought this would be a fun game. Mm. 
Uh, Chief, is it okay if I put you on the spot with this one real quick? We talked about the game earlier. Are we doing a game? I, I have a game idea. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm into it. But uh, 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 Edna Mode versus Janet Dine. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. That Wait, would what? be fun. What? Edna Mode versus Janet Van Dyne in a Project Runway style show. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I thought it would be fun to go through, like, the DC's Trinity, uh, more more than anything. Okay. Uh, and say what year you think that design is from. Ooh. All right. So I, I pulled a few. Chief, if you want to give us either the crazy. Batman, <laughs> Superman, or right. Wonder Woman, I think the dates are next to each one of them, and then you can tell us if we're right or wrong because I don't remember. Because I, I didn't write that down. I'm into this. Ooh. Uh, I mean, I. I, uh, I mean, 60. Five. Oh, I'm 62. going earlier. I'm going to go 55. Oh! Oh, oh my gosh. That's her, that's her I was first throwing one. My... Oh, I, didn't, I was like waiting for you to guess, but you put them in there. You don't get to guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh -huh. that's, that was her uh, first look. Because it was, it was, she, so was it, it a skirt for one second and then a... It was a skirt at the very, very beginning. Uh, it that's was a skirt in uh, the, all, was it All-Star Comics where she actually... Like all everyone thinks it's eight. Sensation Comics, where she, or, but All Star Eight was her actual first appearance. She had a skirt there, but, it, but then it in Sensation turns Comics, into those pants. it immediately turns into those pants. Yeah. So that's ah, the yeah. pants threw me. And that's, yeah, the pants on the low back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. um, uh, I didn't realize. I, I was trying to figure out when she got those those heels. Uh, is that Kurt Swan drawing that Superman? I believe so. Oh. oh man, I'm gonna. Okay, now I'm gonna get into the '60s because that's. Well, I mean, like that's that's obviously Barry Allen Flash, which is kind of cheating. There's also no cuff on the arm for 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 Superman. I have problems. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But see, this is why I did this because I knew that you guys would. Is know it late details. '50s or early '60s? I'm gonna call it early '60s. I'm gonna still land with early '60s too. Yeah. What do we got? Chief Liz. Oh, oh late not '60s. Bad, not later than we yeah. thought. Yeah. Yeah, pushing a little later. Uh, do you want to, do you, are you, are we having this is fun? Really fun? I'm, yes. in, I'm yeah. into this. Uh, yeah, yeah, just, oh! <laughs> uh, I'm calling that 1998. Oh, no, what, what was De Death and Return of Superman? Early 90s. 92. Okay, so I'm calling I was, this I was about to say, like I was going to say 92. I think this is post-Death of Superman. Maybe? Chief in... Oh! Oh, Dead nice. on 92? God damn it. <laughs> You're so close, though. I know. Uh, uh, Chief, can we do a couple more? Is this fun for you? Oh, go, yeah, I mean. Oh. Oh, my yes. God. I love it. Oh, the, wh the white Wonder Woman. No, this is a weird, this is not the jumpsuit. This is not the, the Charlie's Angels Wonder Woman. But this it is. is from the same era because she's got the new Wonder Woman, and it's Diana Prince as. These are collected as Diana Prince Wonder Woman. I'm calling uh -huh. it 67. Early 70s, I want to say? You might be right. I'm calling it late 60s. I'm gonna say late 70s, just to, oh, just just to, to just jazz to it, up. it up. 77. 1969. Oh, oh okay. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so interestingly, uh, what I found, like I looked through a few of those Wonder Womans, the new Wonder Woman. Yeah. Uh, she had a different outfit in almost every issue, <laughs> which I didn't realize. I thought it was all the, always the, the white, white jumpsuit pants. too. Yeah. And she had the white jumpsuit for three or four issues in a row. But there Whoa. was a lot of this. Oh I my god, that that's one. so cute. That's so yep. good. It's really good. Oh wow. Oh my god, oh, I love so god. All that of was these. So yellow pants. I'm in. These are all such looks. What the oh my fuck? Gosh. <laughs> Fashion icon. The new you. Oh. Look at that Lady Gaga shit in the background. Holy shit. And then shit. here she's beating up uh, this is where she learns uh, karate. She because I think she's time. lost her powers. Yeah. So she's learning karate, and this toy maker has made mannequins for her to beat up, and this was a Frankenstein one, and I thought that was kind of awesome. Holy cow. That's really cute. <laughs> the, the, the silver go-go look, I mean, like, I get, I, it's not Wonder Woman, but I, I dig it, but, I, man, fuck, I'm They torn. were trying. They, were, they, they, they thought were trying. they needed to sort of modernize her, and we got some good stuff out of it and some weird, like, some weird it really stuff. wasn't necessary to depower her, but it's kind of an interesting era, and, and she, they give her some, like, women's lib plot lines. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cute. I'm, I'm always okay with playing with the design if I know that you're going to eventually, like, find, find ground again. Like, yeah. Like, I, 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 I like, Electric Superman was, was a dark time Oof. for us all, but, like, Oof. Electric, yeah, but like Superboy. Superboy has had like uh, Superboy is a perfect example of like of like he's basically Superman except like Superman who was left in the dryer for like the beginning of his reality. <laughs> uh, I'm 
mean, no, he's basically he's like Superman's mini me. He's just like he's just like a tiny kid in the. It's like, gosh golly, and then like, <laughs> Death and Return of Superman. They bring back. They give him the like. They altered the costume. I think in a way other than the yellow buckles that I really like. But then they give him a leather jacket, and it's just like, very punk. It's not even punky. What is it? It's it's like. I don't even know what it is. It's like, it's like a, he's like a club kid. He's like a rave kid. Yeah. Like, Are you talking you about the one where he's also got like the, the round leather sunglasses? Jacket, super boy? Yeah, round sunglasses, leather jacket, super boy. Don't call me super boy. Yeah, that, that super boy. I'm Superman. I'm Superman. A look that has weirdly cycled back into, into style. Like, in yeah. style. Like it's as cool uh, that again. angry 92 borderline mullet Superman, mm -hmm. not but then, so much. And, and, no, and not I, so much. And I couldn't find a good picture of it, but there was this brief shining moment where they, they and, I, and I, I will die on this hill, where they kind of streamlined that look. They got rid of all the yellow buckles, and they got rid of the leather jacket, and they gave him a red, uh, a jacket that complemented the lines of the red and, red and blue super suit that he was wearing. That was just like a nut, like it was like it was like the Star Trek Next Generation jackets Ooh. that they were wearing. I was like, and and it's it's like the era where he did like the Batgirl crossover, where the where it was the Cassandra came Batgirl when like they had the weird sexy moment, and I like I just fucking loved it. I loved it. The I was like, sexy the it was the sexy only moment. Superboy costume that they did not get an action figure of. Every other costume has had a goddamn action figure. Oh, including, the, tells oh. including black t-shirt Superboy, jeans and black t-shirt yeah. Superboy, which I just is Who no. do we contact to make that happen? I for don't. You? Yeah, like uh, that's that ew. was literally a I thing. That. I know. <laughs> you know, they I don't know why I have such strong of <laughs> opinion about it. Ooh, I oh, God, no. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> no, it's it, it deserves I mean, like, a backwards cap or something. And I'm like, and At like least. this is the best picture, because I'm pretty sure he's punching Superboy Prime, which was yeah. the worst costume. Give him a trucker hat or something. <laughs> Well, and I, like I know it was because he and Wonder Girl Snap were both back. doing the like <laughs> jeans and T-shirt look, but she had the belly shirt and he had the black T-shirt. Why can't he have a damn jacket for Cassie God's sake? Cassie Wonder Girl. Well, see, that was interesting because that for her. I dug that for her. Like, that would have been like I would have hated that look on Wonder Woman, but for Cassie for her, Sands Mark, like jeans and a tank top and like a lasso was a great look. But like mm -hmm. Super Superboy stopped being fun, like and that really like and 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 like you know, the black T-shirt look got really moody and he got really like. Yeah. like and like they had, and like there's been several iterations of the Superboy Super Boy suit that have been like really moved. Like he's got his own red electric for a while that was like, I'm made of lightning, nah. you know. And but then were they trying to drive the angsty teenager? Yeah, they were home? trying. To, yeah, they were yeah. just really pushing. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but then, yeah, that's a face. and I think that's that a teenager there's, face. Yeah, yeah. There's, a, there's a picture of it. The closest they've done to the suit I liked is the new Super Sons, which is the Superboy. It's I think it's Superboy Super and Robin. So good. Mm. Yeah. Um, and Damian Wayans. Da yeah. It's and and I love the suit that they've got Superman's son in. Now I don't know if it's in there in Super Sons or or, or one of the Superboy millions of Superboy pictures. Like, like, that's the closest to like the Superboy suit I really liked. Yeah. And, like, that's it's cute. still it's jeans. Heck. They got the jeans I still. love that. Look at that. It's so yeah. cute. The ripped knees is oh, such a good detail. It's such converse. And a closure in front Robin works too. nice. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, it's got a zipper. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a nice form-fitting hoodie and like he just attached oh, the I cape love it. to it. And I like the boots on Robin. Yeah? No, Robin with the red laces, like that was a Grant Morrison so thing. So cute. Yeah. I really dug. And Grant Morrison also did the black and yellow uh, the black. Stop, stop it. Every time. The black. <laughs> no, now, now I'm thinking of it every time we God say black. God damn it. It's coming up so much. Uh, the black and yellow jack, uh, uh, a cloak, and I, or the, the, the it was you a. Wanna, you want to know how to fix cape, it? Now a cloak. Don't say black and yellow. Say yellow and black. Yellow and black, but I can't. It's yellow too hard. and black. Yellow and that's yellow what I mean. and black. Yeah. Yellow yeah. and black. Uh, Chief, <laughs> you want to show any of the Batman ones real quick, just because I find those infinitely fascinating. Oh, more questions. Yes. Oh man, I have like a lot. But I, like, I have to, like I have we to also don't have a lot here. of time, yes. and I, I, I like uh, uh, poor chief is is being run through the mill with. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Same, Batman. Same. Uh. <laughs> um, this is this is Death of the Family era. Yeah. Uh, I was gonna go early '80s, but maybe maybe late '80s is. Maybe it is. Late I'm gonna 80s. go early '80s. I'm gonna go early '90s. Boom! Oh, oh, nice. Well done, nice. sir. Telling it. The long ears remind me of 70s Batman. It's, and uh, I wasn't yeah. sure. Uh, yeah, no, it's because it was, it, it's that whole, it's like, it's it's all mid-Robin, because and also he was like being really angsty, so it was like, yeah. it, it, late 80s was sexy, was sexy Batman, where he was actually going around and being like, hey, I'm Batman. And 
Hey, I'm hey. Uh, hey, hey, Talia I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Hey, oh, oh, I'm a Batman. He's always doing that. Come on. Yeah, come on. Batman's classic line. Hey, yeah. hey uh, I'm Batman. I'm a Batman. I want you to play hey, your friends. Hey, 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 oh, I'm a Batman. <laughs> I don't know. Ooh, ew, this is why I'm a I will man. never get cast. Oh, here we go. What about this one? Oh, hell. What's he holding? Oh, that's amazing. Oh, that oh is a, a scoreboard? Well, no, that's, that's, a, that's a, a casino. That's, a like, rule, a, that's oh, like the oh, worst oh, roulette oh, wheel ever. It's a roulette. Okay. I mean, it has to be 40s, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say 40s there's based no on the like, drawing. Yeah, or no, literally 39. There's no yellow yet on the bat. There's 1940. 1940. Oh, exactly 40. 40 on. Yep. Nice. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a great one. That's one of the very first appearances. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Can't remember where exactly what it was. I, it it was a little like because from, didn't have the creepy weird. I think that may have been from Batman 1, actually, too. Uh, I think I pulled it from that one. Nice. He barely has the symbol. It looks yeah. like some schmudge on his... It was interesting going through it all to like this. see... Yeah. Like, cause like, <laughs> I'll become a bat. What, one of the things... <laughs> that looks I, like a bat. All right, yeah. go with What do you bat. see in this? Bat? <laughs> Got it. Got yeah. it. One of the things that I've discovered <laughs> is really fun is to go to Comixology and look through all those single issues and just look at the covers and just like yes. scroll through cover after cover after cover and see... You can start to see slow transformations of... Oh, the that. Superman shield is here, then it's here, then it's here. And his cape is longer, but then it's even longer, and then it's past his feet, and is then it's back. Sh it's is it coming out the back? Is it coming out the shoulders? Is, is it, it like, out the neckline? like yeah? It's is it more like cloak than cape? Yeah, like it's it was actually really fun to do. So and like it's it's it was fascinating on the Wonder Woman because it's like cool skirt. Oh, now she's pants, 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 pants. Now she's in a leisure suit. Like <laughs> it was like because she was the same for like twenty years, and then it was like. Now it's the 60s and she's a liberated woman. We took away her power, but she's <laughs> she's Diana Prince and she's fashionable and a yep. karate using hero. Like, and what's what's interesting is in the meantime, Dr. the whole world had changed too. around no her, weird. right? Like we've talked about this before, but when she shows up in that like the flowing little skirt that becomes the pants, she is looking around at the women of the 40s and being like, I need some freedom freedom of movement. Yeah. You know, they re represented a generation that's like, you know, they, they might need to use machinery. You can't put them in like, you know, hoop skirts are dead. Mm -hmm. that, that kind of... Uh, a superhero not... with a full hoop skirt would be real great. Oh, yeah. Man. Just to figure yeah. that out. <laughs> An uh, attack hoop skirt? Yeah. So, yeah. It's like a weapon, it unravels. So I, I hate to do this, but we are running oh, out of yeah. time. Yes. Are there any burning questions from the chat that we should answer burning before we do our five-minute topic? Uh, heaving, burning, heaving? flames, <laughs> heaving, heaving, heaving. On it with the questions today. Uh, wow, I know it's pages. <laughs> Manzi, if commissioned, how long would it take you, a professional, to make a Molly Mock cosplay? Uh, oh, a oh my God! Question. Well, a lot of time. I know the coat is an insane thing, and I know you made the coat an insane thing I on did. purpose. Just, I did. <laughs> like a long time. That uh, being said, there was some incredible Molly Mock cosplay at WonderCon. There was, yeah, there was like, I saw that there when was you reached really out. Really asked what our favorite WonderCon costumes were, but I don't uh, know if we have any pictures to show, so it would just be oh, us yeah. talking. I, mean, well, I saw a Harley Tank Girl mashup. That was amazing. Yep. Oh, yep. Nice. Cool. It was it was Tenko mashed up a little bit with Movie Harley, except it said I'm not anyone's anything. Like it was great. Oh yeah, I was. Really That's awesome. awesome. That I, oh, that. I love that. It was real good because also classic Harley. Yeah. Uh, Je Jeanette, uh, I mean her Doctor Strange was. Exquisite. Oh yeah. It was. Really yeah, it was pretty and solid. And she made it on her way back and forth on the train to work because she lives down in like the south side of L.A. but works in Glendale, so she would get on the train and stitch. That's awesome. Get to work. Make her patterns, go home, stitch. She hand stitched the entire cloak. She like it's impressive what she did. <laughs> it was really good. All by hand. Yeah. Mm. Getting to see it up close too, I was like, nice. 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 And she 3D printed it. Like it's yeah, just like yeah. well done. Well done. I will say, like, just in terms of design choices, one of one of the most moving things I saw at WonderCon was two like fully like grown, not not like old women, but like mature women. Walking down, uh, and they were they were Holdo and Leia, and General Leia, and it was funny because it was like it broke my heart at twenty paces because uh -huh. all they had to do to embody those characters was just walk and talk to each other like casually. They both looked great. They looked comfortable. Like they they had their outfits on, and it was just like characters exist for those women to be that they are perfectly suited for, that are comfortable to move around in and wear, that flatter them, that they look awesome in, and they can, like, they don't even have to do anything. And I was just like, you're friends, well, and I'm reading a whole, I'm pro 
projecting a <laughs> whole life onto you because well, that's how that's the magic. And they're cosplay. powerful characters. Yeah. Like, the, like yes, it's a comfortable costume, but there's the character that embodies that costume is a powerful one, and it's. I'm, I'm a yeah. big like anyone can cosplay anything, but that those characters existed for those women to be and just walk like it was. Oh, it was great. I'm I was utterly distracted by Critical Role cosplay. So uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard. I did see a lot of that. I wasn't yeah, even looking was for so it. And I was like, yeah. there's a Marisha. There's a there's a <laughs> there's a Marisha. There's yeah. a there, yeah, yeah. There's a <laughs> I'm I'm I, I, I'm glad that you read it that way because I yeah, know you do not have the time no, to watch it. I actually shows. like I actually blurted out as a um, as someone who was Keyleth. Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. yeah. As someone who was <laughs> Keyleth, I literally said Marisha, and then I was like, oh. No, what's her name? Yeah. No. Yeah, like great there, Marisha there costume. A, like there was a beautiful <laughs> Keyleth costume. I think she even asked the question at the panel, but mm -hmm. like. The robe, and she had a light up staff, and like we were I think that was the girl I saw that yeah. I yelled Marisha. At. Yeah, yeah, we I was were like, walking You're behind her into the arena, and we were like, "Oh, I bet she's gonna ask a question. That is beautiful." And then, sure enough, she asked a question, and Brittany and I were like, "Called it." I, I but I'm like, and like you know that a lot of that was based off of stuff that Drew had made, uh, and then Jessica Drew. Yeah, Jessica Drew. The Keyleth costume is, is a bunch of stuff out of That's Drew's right. closet. That's right. That's right. And she's like, every now and then, someone calls me. It's like, could you make me one? I'm like, no. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Never again. That was a nightmare. I forgot that she like, so, styled that. Yeah. We, we do need to do our five minutes yeah, off because we we're running out of time. I can't find the winner. It's in here somewhere. Oh, there. oh found it. Yeah. yeah? I accidentally. Yeah. I actually skimmed down to the topic because oh. y'all had so many suggestions today. Uh, uh, all right. So while you're doing that, I'm going to introduce it. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is the Wednesday Club. You can catch us on Geek and Sundry's Twitch channel every night at 7 o'clock. Also on Alpha. Uh, where you can see all of our uh, 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 shows on al projectalpha.com. Go watch it there. Uh, we're going to do our five-minute one-shot topic where uh, our audience has asked us a question. We're going to answer it in five minutes, each of us. Uh, Amy, can you, uh, what's oh the question? Oh, my. Okay, we're going to lean heavily on our guest today because Ink Pig asks, you get to design your own superhero suit. Oh, What God. does it look like? Oh, no. Oh, oh my, my gosh. God. No. No. Like for me personally. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I've thought Nancy too the much superhero. about this. It's too much. I've thought, I've thought too, too much, much about it too. No. I know. Uh. I couldn't even make decisions when we were trying to do cartoon avatars of ourselves. Uh, I because I have no. Yeah. Um. Silence for 20 seconds already. I think I have an answer. Do you? No, please. If, if yes. you do, start yes. the ball run, rolling. I think I would go for almost like a kind of a Thor direction where it's like a fantasy and. Superhero like mashup. Okay. I want enormous pauldrons. Okay. An enormous <laughs> cape, probably like a long flowing like tabard of some kind in like red silk or something. Um, basically a lot of armor. I don't want to wear a shit ton of armor. I want to have an enormous weapon that's like bigger than me. That's basically where I want to go with this. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Maybe floating crystals all around me or something. Let's just Ooh. do that. Let's just go all the way with this. Wow. All the way Floating crazy crystals? fantasy. Yeah. Maybe the sword is a giant crystal sword, too. Pink. Giant pink crystal sword. Oh, bless you. Giant pink crystals floating around me, embedded in my shoulders. That is very you. Okay. One of these people is a professional <laughs> in visual arts. Uh, Not me. Uh. <laughs> That's amazing. What, what does your uh. superhero do? I just... Uh, what does my superhero do? It would have to be some kind of magical power, but I'm not sure what kind of power. Is the magic in the sword, or did you get the sword like to help with? I feel like the magic is in the crystal, and I've acquired the crystal somehow, and I fashioned it into a sword, and I used the power of the crystal. Maybe I like throw the crystal shards at people and slice them up or something. I, nice. I, I like. I like. Um, Real-world applications that are then have been mashed up with fantastical applications. So like no spandex for me. I think I would want a suit, like like a very very nice suit, but that had also been distressed and augmented. So like 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 I love a suit that would that was actually just maybe covered in brilliant beautiful arcane text that would slowly shift and move and make their way around with maybe like a kind of terrible. I like and I also like things that like glow otherworldly. So like an yeah. otherworldly glowing <laughs> tie and pocket square, and then just like and then maybe just a very like. Simple, strange domino mask, except you can't see the eyes through it. It's just all blank and just Ooh. very mysterious. I know it's just like very I like cemetery. That. I like I like anything that's like very spectery. Like, and they would all be like, I just could be walk up to people and just tell them terrible things about themselves, and then they get sad and then they go away. They stop so, finding doing whatever. They, do. <laughs> they get sad I and think, go away. Yes, 
I think I know what I would. Oh God, your superpower is okay. depression. Yeah, I, I think That's I know. So true. I would want to look. <laughs> I would want to dress like a 19th <sighs> century, like gentleman professor. Okay. Like that would be my costume, because like I, I, I mean, I would be a sorcerer mm. of some sort, like an esoteric sorcerer. Uh, but like there would be, it would be uh, kind of maybe a little similar to, to Molly Mock's coat, where there's like yes. a bit of patchwork to it. Mm. But I think maybe the patchwork is very specific, and it's like this is a patchwork from this mystical like cloak, or this is a, a piece of cloth from like the Shroud of Turin, or something like that. Where mm. it's like all stuff that I've sewn in there almost is like a sigil or something like that. Um, and uh, I love what Liam has done with, done with where he's kind of a book slinger. So like I would have like spells inside of the kind of like a take on, rag, um, take on Ragman maybe Slightly. a bit a bit yeah but like a, a hyper like gentlemanly like hello I'm a Ragman kind mm. of like, <laughs> mm, this awesome Doctor Ragman like maybe I don't know like maybe I've got like ragman. a yeah 1880s like gas lamp Ragman. Mm. Gas lamp Ragman. <laughs> Make it a thing. <laughs> uh, I, I, it. I think that's what I would do. And maybe have like a like one of those like like eight seventeenth century like doctors kind of surgeon caps. I don't know. Probably not. Okay. But like glasses. Oh, there's but my one glasses. minute left. Uh, one minute, yeah. Okay, let's. So I I think I'm just gonna embrace the fact that like I can't I wouldn't be full Jenna Van Dyne because I don't have that level of this. <laughs> but like I I'm gonna say that my superhero would have a series of bad idea costumes a la Kitty Pryde. Oh, oh I love like, that. Trying to figure it out. Trying to be like, oh, uh, like, when the, the, the key difference is that, like, my superhero version of me is not afraid to go to 11 with it, like Kitty yeah. does, where she's like, and today, roller skates. Oh, I love roller like, skates. Like, uh, she, she's famously had a series of costumes which, like, despite the fact that she is a beloved, extremely memorable, very easy to define and talk about character, figuring out a visual iconography that will stick and communicate her has proven very challenging. So I'm gonna say, like, my superhero would would also not have that skill. It would be like, we're trying this now. We're and that's been our that one topic. Now. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> we got three seconds left. Uh, again, we are the Wednesday Club. Uh, we're on Geek and Sundry's out, uh, Twitch channel at 7 p.m. on uh, uh, Geek and Sundry's Twitch, and also on Alpha. I said that a lot. My name is Matt Key. We're joined by Amy Dallin and uh, Talis and Jeffy and, and our special, special guest, Nancy Young. Woo! Yay! Thanks, yeah, everybody. Sure. <laughs> professional. Oh. We got three minutes left. Oh my God! Let's answer some questions. Hi guys. Oh thank my gosh, so Doctor Rag yes, Patchwork thank you for Sorcerer. Doctor Rag Patchwork Sorcerer. Oh, Rag yeah. has two G's. Doctor yeah. Rag. Rag. Doctor Rag. Patchwork Sorcerer. Love it. Doctor Ragman. Can, can you make that for me? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's go make that right now. All right. Right now. I'm showing you. Goodbye. And I love to the costume. One line. scene. <laughs> Scrolling has stopped working on the tablet, so sorry about that. Everybody else who asked questions, here, here. a lot of them were about things that you would like it. to work on. It. I'm tapping it uh, manually. What book or movie has solidified your love of the hero genre, says Gamer Kay McD. Hmm. Uh, Batman Animated Series is my favorite yeah, thing yeah. ever made. That it's was... my favorite comic book related thing ever made, and that's definitely what. What, that, that was a gateway drug me. for a lot. Yeah, of people. totally gateway that drug. For anima me. X Men animated. Yeah. Yes, those that too was yep. was great. It was uh, basically a generation of comic book fans just got launched by those. Yep. Oh. Yeah. So that's an interesting one because they make tons of uh, design decisions in that that I don't know if you can bring into real life, but they work perfectly in animation. Right, because it's so stylized. So yeah. That's a perfect Marvel cosplay for you now because it like it hits a, like your 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 hair and also your desire for giant armor. Slapstick <laughs> magic. <gasps> I don't even rest. know what that is. What is that? Show it to you. We're going to show it to you later. Sword. Yeah. Giant sword. Oh my god, yes. Giant you can sword. Fix giant some armor. of the soul issues sword. in her. It'll I'll be go fine. classic, classic, where it was like the X Men uniform and then armor on top. Yes. Yeah, and, and not not the current one with the boob. No, no boob. No, yeah, no boob. Sometimes it's striking, but it just doesn't necessarily no. need to look. We don't need the boob one, though. Oh, yeah. costumes. Uh, do we? So we've got two minutes left. Do we know what we're talking about next week that we want to? We sure do. We have a special guest. We have Ashley Escada joining us. Right? That's next Am week? I crazy? I, I think I don't, that's next week. I don't week. remember. I, I, it is? Okay, yeah, awesome. Oh, there's, that's, uh, that's uh, one of the, the armor. that's, that's uh, Ileana, Ileana out of the, look. Uh, 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 we're going to be joined by Ashley Escueda. Yes, uh, Escueda from, from Escueda. Com Alpha Comic Book Club, and we're going to do a Kelly Sue DeConnick spotlight. It's yeah, deep. we're going to uh, uh, do a little bit of Bitch Planet, and then mm. we're gonna some Captain Marvel. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Some Captain Marvel. Uh, yeah, so uh, if you want to uh, get ahead of the game, go uh, look up Bitch Planet and Captain Marvel and Kelly Sue DeConnick's other works. We're going to be talking about a lot of it.
And Ashley's great. Uh, she's from Alpha Comic Book Club, our yeah. art sister show on yeah. Tuesdays. Mandy, thank you so much for being thank here. You thank you for you. having me. This is so much fun, you guys. Where can yeah. people find you online? Oh, uh, so my website isn't up again. I mean, famously, artists can never get their shit together. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Manzanator with a zero. The last O is a zero because I'm still holding on to that that early 2000s lead speak. That is, that yep, is, yeah. you know, still holding on to it. But yeah, follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I update regularly, and uh, you can see my costumes and my stuff there. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for joining us. Yay! One Thanks of our, for having one of our, me. It's so fun. One of our, uh, a member of our family. Yes. Uh, and uh, we will see you. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Yeah, yes, watch please. Key Question. Uh, and, Tiny and Matt thank you, Key says. Uh, thank you to uh, all thank of you who have given key. us a love for Thanks, the Doctor Tiny Strange key. episode. It was. Uh, it meant a lot. Uh, yeah, uh, anyway, we're, uh, <laughs> producer Liz is telling me I'm crazy. So, bye everybody. We love bye, you. Guys. Bye everyone. Stay tuned for me.